What's good, everybody, and welcome to another episode of the What's Good Games podcast, your source for video game news, commentary, analysis, and funny stuff every Friday. I'm your host, Andrea Renee, joined by one sweaty Christine Steimer. <laughs> Hello, yeah. This is what happens when you don't have air conditioning. And Miss Brittany Brombacher. Hello. Meanwhile, I'm wearing a sweatshirt because I'm in Washington. It's very hot here in Los Angeles County. I believe it's in the 90s. Holy it's, what? It's too, it's too warm for oh, me. It is exactly right 90 degrees. The high today was 94. In, wow. In, um, in my neck of the woods. How's feeling? You know, it's pretty toasty in here because the PC gets warm and then the fans kick on and then it just blows the hot air out. But next week... The AC is getting installed just in time for the anniversary stream. Very Woo. excited about it. I'm sure all of the bugs are very happy about that, too. Um, the bugs are going to be taken care of sooner than later. But <laughs> thankfully, when I did the construction project, converting the garage into the studio, I very clearly told my fantastic contractor there was to be no windows, there's to be no vents, there's to be no openings. Everything is going to be solid walls. Field. Yeah. I will have no bugs in the studio. <laughs> and so or far, Linux. so far, so good. No bugs out in the studio. Probably no because... Kratos, Daddy Long Legs. No, I honestly wouldn't mind Kratos making an appearance. Daddy Long Legs, totally cool. That's not the kind of spiders in the Drake household. We all bought those brown and black widows. I don't know if you, you saw my photo I posted on Twitter, but yes. Anna Barlog, Cory Barlog's wife, Cory Barlog, of course, of God of War fame. Sony Santa Monica. Uh, she posts about spiders all the time and has given me a new appreciation for spiders. And I try to be more considerate of spiders and I sharing space together. But when it comes to widows, of which I've discovered there are five different species. <laughs> you went down a rabbit hole, didn't you? Oh, I had to because I had to find out if these brown widows were just as dangerous as the black widows. Turns out they are not. Turns out black widows also not as dangerous as people make them out to be. In fact, they generally keep to themselves. They'll only really bite you if they get, like, stuck on you somehow and they can't get away. <laughs> that makes me clench. Well, like, <laughs> if you're dumb enough to leave your shoes outside and you don't, like, shake them out for insects before you put them on, then, like, maybe a black widow would bite you if you stuck your foot inside of a shoe and the black widow was there. Um, but for the most part, they leave you alone. They're very non-aggressive and if they do bite you, in the vast majority of people, it's just a painful bite and it's not actually going to kill you. But it does make you pretty sick for a couple days. Anywho, uh, brown widows, not as dangerous, but just as scary looking. Uh, so, anywho, <laughs> I got off on a tangent on spiders there. Let's not talk about spiders. Let's talk about video games and cool streams. So, <laughs> this Friday, the day the podcast airs, Friday, May 8th, is Bungie Bounty Day for What's Good Games and Kinda Funny. We are working with Bungie to stream Destiny 2 and play in the Crucible, all for a good cause as part of Bungie's Guardian Hearts fundraiser. Their initial goal was to raise $700,000 for direct relief, which is providing assistance for frontline medical workers and other healthcare workers who are dealing with the COVID-19 pandemic. They flew past that goal, which is very exciting. And we are now just adding more money to the pile to try to help as many first responders as we can. And if you donate, you get an exclusive emblem. And if you kill Greg or I or any or take down our team in the Crucible, you win a different exclusive emblem. It's going to be fun so if you're listening friday morning that's happening at 12 p.m pacific time uh head on over to my twitter for all of the details you can watch at twitch.tv slash what's good games speaking of our twitch channel on monday for what's good games live at 11 a.m pacific time Brittany and i are going to be joined by special guest anita sarkeesian so i haven't talked to anita in a hot minute and she had reached out to me to let me know that she is working with our good friends at takethis.org and some other awesome folks like the IGDA to do a global campaign and awareness about online harassment and the online harassment hotline. So they're doing a fundraiser and it's started on May 5th and it runs through the 21st and she's going to tell us all about it and then we're going to ask her a bunch of questions and ask her about what she's been up to. So if you guys want to join us for that, it should be really fun. If you guys want to send questions for Anita, you can send those of course to whatsgoodgames.com slash drwgg or join us live in the Twitch chat. 
And Brittany, we've got some other stuff happening too. We do. This, well, not this. Next Friday, May 15th, we're going to be on Animal Talking with one Gary Witta. And I think it's at 9 a.m., correct? It is, 9 a.m. Pacific time. Twitch.tv slash Gary Witta. Oh, it's going to be real good. I heard that we have to t- tell some jokes. I hear that's a tradition yes. of Gary's show. And I already I already got my joke picked out. Oh, ahead of the curve. I like it. <laughs> you know, me being all ahead of the game or whatever. Anyway, moving on. And then the next day, Saturday, May 16th, is our WGG3 Woo-hoo! anniversary stream. Oh, Birthday we're three years time. old, ladies. We're toddlers. We are. We just are stumbling toddlers. through life. We've just yeah, learned how to talk. Yeah. Is, is talking or babbling? Which one is it? Uh, talking. Both. Words. Yeah, words are words are happening at three for sure. Okay, okay, cool. Uh, we're going to finalize the schedule, I guess, pretty soon. So we'll have more details about that very shortly. But I believe we're aiming for our 12 to 6. Yep. Time. That's it. 12 p.m. Gonna, Pacific time. It's going to be wonderful. We're going to have gameplay. And I may or may not be doing some Microsoft Paint shenanigans. I might not be, you know, Simer wants me to draw something, I'll draw it for her. Chat, community wants me to draw something, I'll draw it for you. It'll be great. It won't be great. The art's going to be terrible, but you'll love it anyway. It's going to be beautiful. Thank you, Simer. Hang it in your house. Yeah. And then for our patrons and all new patrons, the next Sunday, the 17th, is going to be our Patreon exclusive streams. So our happy hour Q&A, our after hours, we'll be playing some video games and hanging out. So we have a lot of streaming next week, ladies. Yes. It's going to be a good time, though. Well, we're all still here at home, and it sounds like even more events are canceled throughout the year. So... Rip. stream away it's been great though like this week we stream something every single day which is pretty awesome oh yeah sure did yeah big shout out and thank you to john drake and geo corsi for joining us for margaritas and mayhem on tuesday in predator hunting grounds we're going to talk about that a little bit more in our hands-on segment steimer had a fantastic birthday stream thanks to everybody they for showing did, up indeed that was but- so fun yeah, that was really fun. Thanks to everybody who came by and said hello, said happy birthday, or you know, gifted subs, or did any of those wonderful things. Yeah, fun. we had a we had a lot of people who who came by and and were cheering and throwing those bits in the tip cup. It was really fun. Yep. I had a good time. And uh, this morning, which is Thursday, Britt and I did a live react to the Xbox Inside Xbox episode, which we're going to talk about in just a few minutes. And then, of course, the Bungie Bounty stream. So. If you're not following us at twitch.tv slash what's good games, now's a great time. And also a friendly reminder that if you have Amazon Prime, you have a free Twitch Prime sub. And I would kindly request that you consider maybe giving it to us at what's good games. That's all. Okay, on to the news. Thank you so much to this month's Patreon producers, Chewie's Godson, Alex Rogopoulos, Ferris Ate, Muhammad Muhammad, Marcus Brown, Punctified, and Male Bittner. And welcome to our Patreon community. Javin Mather, Jack Matheson, Brooke Inglis, Rob McCrock, Brooke S., mm-hmm. Maddie Stanley, Catherine Dewey Houston. <laughs> Dewey Houston. I don't know if I could do better, but Dewey. that was great. Dewey Houston. Uh, Catherine, Summer, you're probably better than we are at that. <laughs> It's okay. I'm sure it's fine. <laughs> oh. Catherine, sure you sorry. both nailed it. I'm sorry. Chris Titchener, Nathan Watkins, Randall Smilex, Schaefer, Matthew Wynn, James, Ethan Lawson, Ariana Pena. It had a squiggly. I don't know how to do that here. <laughs> it was a squiggly and it was a Pena. A, t- a tilde? Is that what it's called? Pena. Uh, th- <laughs> yeah, that's good. <laughs> Throw seven, Amanda Urita. Uh, Urita? And oh, Briley no. Streeter, welcome to patreon.com slash what's good games. We hope that you enjoy your fantastic Patreon benefits. Speaking of which, I know I said we're about to get into the news, but first, Brittany needs to, needs to talk about podcast reviewers. But while I'm on the topic of Patreon rewards, I finally went in and cleaned up our Discord and Patreon rewards. If you are part of our Patreon community, and you have a Discord account, and you're part of the What's Good Games server on Discord, discord.gg slash what's good games, you get rewards, meaning you have a special Patreon-only chat room, and the tier that you are on Patreon is color-coordinated to reflect that in your name in the What's Good Games Discord server. So if you're like, why is my name suddenly purple? Or why is my name suddenly blue or orange? 
It's because it's because you fancy. Yeah, it's because you're a patron and supporter of What's Good Games. So just wanted to remind you that if you want to make sure that that shows up, you have to go to your Patreon profile and make sure it's connected to Discord. Just an FYI. Yeah. All right. So I wanted to give a shout out to our single podcast reviewer this week, Pancakes, <laughs> a.k.a. Logan. <laughs> it left this really, really nice review, and I wanted to read it because it made me feel warm and fuzzy. This podcast is something I look forward to every Friday. The ladies who do this have amazing chemistry, are funny, kind, and just make you feel good. They are also very knowledgeable and provide their opinions about recent news stories. These women are strong and overcome a lot of adversity working in this industry but have never given up. We'll forever support this channel, and I recommend you come join. Aww, that's so nice. I know. Thanks Thanks for that was really sweet. Um, so that, with that being said, ladies and gentlemen, this was the only podcast review we got last week, which is like, yo, Pancake Slogan, appreciate you, shout out, you bay. But it would be nice if we could get some more in there because it really does help us out and it makes us feel all warm and fuzzy. And the more people listen to our show, the more content we can make or something like that. Maybe we'll sure. I'll learn to do. I'll yeah. I'll learn to do somersaults for you if you get more reviewers. <laughs> you can't do a somersault. I'd be really surprised. I used to do somersaults, and I probably still could. But my back, girl, I am a stiff ass board. I need to get back into yoga. I need to get a massage. It would probably look like a boulder rolling down a hill. It would not be graceful. That would actually be amazing. Sounds like hashtag okay. content to me. Ah shit. Okay, so we get more. Po- <laughs> how many podcast reviewers before I do a somersault? Ooh, I like where this is going. What about 10? Okay. That seems reasonable, yeah? Yeah, 10 yeah. podcast reviewers. I will attempt to do a somersault. We'll have, uh, we'll have your husband tape you. It'll be great. Oh, God. I, I'm, I'm in for it. And I just want to, you know, on, on the tail of what Brittany said, it's a great way to support what we do without having to spend any money. It just takes a couple of minutes of your time to go to the podcast platform that you listen to us on and leave us a five star review. Like Brittany said, those rankings really do help us a lot in a lot more ways than we could explain in a short amount of time here on the podcast. But we know that supporting the show financially is not something that everybody can do and we 100% understand and never expect anybody to do it and so we say hey you know what a way you could help us out without spending any money go to your favorite podcast platform and leave us a review all right now let's get into the news and this week the news is brought to you by honey online shopping is supposed to be easy everybody and honey helps you by giving you a free online shopping tool that saves you money online. Honey automatically finds the best promo codes and applies them to your cart, which makes online shopping finally feel as easy as it's supposed to be. Imagine you're shopping online on one of your favorite sites, Target, Best Buy, Sephora, Macy's, eBay, Etsy, Walmart, etc. When you check out, a little box drops down and all you have to do is click apply coupons. Wait a few seconds, it scans every promo code on the internet and then watch the prices drop. We've been talking about Honey quite a bit over the last couple of months here at What's Good Games. Uh, last time we talked about it, Miss Jessica Chobot was here and installed it live right on the show. And what's great about Honey is that it just works in the background to save you money for things you already were going to buy. And it's as easy as installing it on your browser. I have it installed on my Chrome browser and it helps me earn gold and save money. Britt just saves some money. I saved $11 ordering postcards for patrons last month. So I got to buy myself some honorary Chipotle because it's what the three of us always used to eat together when we would shoot. Hopefully one day we'll get to share Chipotle again together. (laughs) But it's just money that I wouldn't have saved otherwise because it's something I knew I was going to buy. But then Honey's like, oh, I got you, boo. I'll run all those coupons for you. And so I can't say enough about how easy Honey is to use. And... Honey has found its 18 million members over $2 billion in savings. That's a lot of dollars saved. And Honey supports over 30,000 stores online since we're all shopping online these days. And they're adding more every day. Users love Honey and that's why it has over 100,000 five-star reviews to the Google Chrome store. Brittany, what would you do if we got 100,000 five-star reviews? It'd have to be more than just a somersault. (laughs) I was going to say, I would do 18 somersaults. 18? Okay. Exactly 18. And maybe I'd even throw in a cartwheel. Oh, Who could say? oh dang. I would dare challenge you to do a full backflip. Learn how to do a backflip if we get 100,000 five-star reviews. Baby girl, I can't even touch my fucking toes. Just shoot for the moon. 
I'll we help you. end up in the stars. <laughs> you do a backflip in a pool. Just like okay. do a circle. I'll just just swim, swim in a circle. Okay. Perfect. I love it. I can do that. Excellent. Not using Honey is literally passing up free money. And it's free to use and install in just two clicks. To get Honey for free, use joinhoney.com slash what's good. Don't just go to Google and type in Honey. We need you to help What's Good Games by going to joinhoney.com slash what's good. It's free to use at joinhoney.com slash what's good. So we decided because the Inside Xbox announcements are so extensive that we're going to start with those first, take our first break, and then come back and talk about the rest of the news for the week. So Brittany, do you want to kick us off here? I would love to. So Andrea took these amazing notes, but (laughs) news.xbox.com kind of had the more thorough explanation of every title. (laughs) Yes. (laughs) This is coming from news.xbox.com, and it starts off with this. We kicked off today with an episode of Inside Xbox that included a very special first look at Xbox Series X gameplay event, which highlighted 13 new titles coming to Xbox Series X in the launch window from a variety of our development partners from across the globe. We're also happy to share that all of the games included in the show will be Xbox Series X optimized, meaning they are built to take advantage of the powerful Xbox Series X features that makes games look and feel incredible, including 4K resolution, up to 120 frames per second, direct storage, hardware accelerated, direct X ray tracing super foot last loading times and much more that was a tongue twister and then they basically said you'll also know that some of the titles below have asterisks next to their names which we'll point out and these titles are confirmed to take advantage of smart delivery so andrea do you want to get your aggression out first and we can talk about the first (laughs) game on this list which is assassin's creed valhalla sure now to be clear i'm not (laughs) i'm not like super upset i'm just disappointed and the reason I'm disappointed... Yeah, I think that's fair. Right, is that Ubisoft made a big whoop de doo about showcasing gameplay for Xbox Series X, gameplay world review, world premiere, whatever you want to call it. They made a bunch of razzle-dazzle. They didn't have to do that. They could have just said, look for an all-new Assassin's Creed Valhalla trailer in the Xbox Series X inside Xbox episode. But they made a big deal about pushing the word gameplay. And we did not see gameplay. We saw in-engine cutscenes, and we saw in-engine, like, um, staged scenes. But this was not, like, live gameplay for sure. And it wasn't even, like, recorded gameplay at its best, right? And so I just was disappointed that I was looking forward, and like a lot of people were, that we were going to see a little bit of Ivor in action. And after making such a big deal about the visceral combat and how it's meant to be authentic and feel really weighty and like they're trying to stay true to this the Viking experience thing that Ubisoft Montreal is going for, I just was a little like, wah, wah. I mean, of course the game no, was... I- Sorry, go ahead, Steimer. Oh, no, I was going to agree with you. I thought you were done. <laughs> <laughs> I, I can be done. <laughs> okay. Uh, just because, yeah, I went... I, I was watching... Um, and I was just like, wait, was that it? Like, I literally, oh, I think I said that all. I was like, wait a minute. I thought, like you said, we were getting more gameplay. Like, maybe they're going to deep dive in and show you how the axes would work or show you how literally anything, how anything would work. And instead, it was just basically, like you said, in-game footage, but not actually what you would be playing. And so uh, I was just left scratching my head a little bit. And then they moved on to something else. And I was like, what? okay, bye. Yeah, <laughs> bye, that was Valhalla. It. Yeah, that was a bummer. I was, I think the exact question I asked is, will there be magic? Because I was thinking about you, Steimer, baby girl, hoping yeah. they would show some of that rune action or show something uh, that was really exciting. And granted, the game does look beautiful from what we saw. But as Shania Twain once said, that don't impress me much in terms of like, you can only impress us so far now when we That's see this in-game stuff. That's a great callback. Just going to say, good job. Thank you. I wish I had the... Was it like a cheetah or leopard coat that she was wearing in that? Yeah, she, oh, she was like yeah. full on leopard. With oh, like yeah. the pink liner. Oh, so good. Uh, so, yeah, so good. I feel like there's a, there was a way for Ubisoft to show a little bit of gameplay without showing a full deep dive. Because obviously they're going to save that for their own digital event whenever they announce that, right? We know that that's going to happen at some point. But show like three minutes of just like a quick battle. With the HUD, yeah. even if the HUD's not final or even if you want to just like flash the HUD, even with a disclaimer that says like, 
art not final or a heads up display not final, something to let us know that it's in gameplay and not just in you know a very rehearsed cutscene. I was just I was just bummed. To me, to me, they showed nothing new that we didn't see from a different angle in the reveal trailer. And that interview with Ash, I was Lisa. I love both of those guys. Jeff is Jeff Rubenstein on the Xbox team. Works with us all the time here at What's Good Games. He is a wonderful, great person. Ashraf Ismail, the creative director I've worked with and interviewed several times over my career. Also a wonderful, great person. That interview was just a waste of time for both of them. <laughs> he, repeated, he repeated everything he said last week. There was literally not a single new piece of information. I was like, cool, it's good to see both of you guys are at home with your headsets. But <laughs> what's, what's, what's the but purpose? But did you know <laughs> that this was based on viking lore uh, you know did, i did i missed that did you know that this is all about the big burly men attacking england mm. <laughs> but they did say thankfully this i think we all will appreciate this and this wasn't directly related to the inside xbox event but that ac valhalla won't be as beefy it won't be the biggest game because due to all the bloat from the last one that ubisoft is taking that criticism to heart and making it I mean, smaller. I mean, who knows, like, how much smaller yeah, smaller small really is. Yeah, small for Assassin's Creed game is still going to be a hefty, hefty boy. A yeah. hefty boy. But I thought that was great news as well. Maybe yes. Yeah. Agree. He's so intimidating. Okay. So next, I mean, we can just briefly go through all of these, I guess. and won't take too long. We got Bright Memory Infinite from Playism. This is an all-new lightning-fast fusion of the FPS and action genre created by FYQD Studio. It combines a wide variety of skills and abilities to unleash dazzling combo attacks. It's set in a sprawling futuristic metropolis in the year 2036. A strange phenomenon for which scientists can find no explanation has occurred in the skies around the world. The Supernatural Science Research Organization has sent agents out to various regions to investigate Investigate this phenomenon. It is soon discovered that these strange occurrences are connected to an archaic mystery, an as of yet unknown history of two worlds about to come to light. Dot dot dot. Now I admittedly need to watch, look at a screenshot of this one because I don't remember what this one was. This was the very first game oh. that they showed, and at first, oh. when we were watching the live, watching the live, um, the live stream, I thought this might have been a tech demo because That's they right. they mashed up. Uh, there was a player uh, with a gun fighting uh, what looked like a Spartan with a sword and a shield, and then a race car appeared. And so I was like, in my mind, I'm like, oh, maybe this is some kind of really fancy tech demo that Xbox put together to showcase what the gameplay could look like. And then, boom, we find out it's actually a game from Playism. And so I am really curious to see how this is all going to come together <laughs> and what the kind of framework for this game is going to look like. Yeah, it was really weird. I mean, I, I'd be lying if I said I wasn't interested in going after Spartans with a what looked like to be a shotgun. That's kind of a fascinating concept. Seemed a but little yeah, unfair. I, I, <laughs> it has this cool, like, bungee pulley system, like, that comes out of your arm. Actually, really neat. But this is, yeah, the, like Andrea said, the game that the presentation kicked off with. And I thought it was, it was a pretty good at, at first. And we'll get into, you know, what the expectations were for this whole presentation, whether or not they were met, I guess, at the end of this. But... Uh, you know, there's all of these things happening on screen, and the game looked beautiful, obviously, but they have all these particles. It almost looked like the character was in the middle of a tornado or something, and I thought that it's was really cool. It's a windstorm for sure, yeah. Like a very big windstorm of something, and it, it's it's nice to see those effects and that it can handle, the hardware can handle that, but I, that's kind of like the only real takeaway I got, because other than that, I don't know what to make of this game, because it looks bonkers. But, it's shooting McShoots with some, you know, battering shit. Not battering. What's the <laughs> just going straight up? Like the yeah, you're talking, what is the tool oh, you're talking about the grapple the grappling hook. Yeah, 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 yeah. The grappling hook got some weird grappling hook bungee shit, and then apparently a bunch of cars driving. Yeah. Yeah. I don't like this. Was kind of it does it does look like a tech demo almost just because it looks like it's designed to show off what all the hardware can do. So yeah. It looks fun, though. Like, I kind of just want to go in there and mash buttons and see what happens. Because it feels <laughs> like no matter what you hit, you're doing something cool. <laughs> I don't know why you're doing any of it, but I'm sure we'll get to that later. Yeah, it there will, could be a story sprinkled in there. Yeah, it'll all, it'll all become clear. Um, all right. Next we have... Are you ready to move on or do you have something else? No, go. Okay, girl. We have Call of the Sea from Raw Fury, and this is an asterisk, which means it is going to take advantage of smart delivery as Will Valhalla. 
So this is a first-person adventure game set in the 1930s that tells the story of Nora, a woman on the trail of her missing husband's expedition. The search takes place on a strange but beautiful island in the South Pacific filled with secrets waiting to be unearthed. It is an otherworldly tale of mystery, adventure, and self-discovery. This was the one where there was a shot of her with webbed hands, right? Swimming? Yeah. Yeah, it is. So we actually saw some gameplay from this one, so that was nice. And I think Rough Yuri has been doing a great job of working with smaller indie devs to bring some really interesting games to light. So I'm definitely interested in getting hands-on with this one and, and checking it out. Mm-hmm. Yeah, this was... Um, sort of a breath of fresh air for me because there was so much like happening in the Xbox conference at this point that was kind of grossing me out or like I was just like oh man can we have something nice and then it was like oh yeah here you go (laughs) here's a game that looks pretty and yeah it's a little cartoonish but I'm okay with that and just looks like okay yeah that's a that's a game that I can get into a little bit more than some of the others like Scorn yeah Yeah. there was (laughs) There were actually, no, honestly, thank you. I, as I was watching, I kept being like, ew. Like, I think I said ew more times during this Is that than I really like a, wanted to. A Brit stream. There's a lot of games that I was like, oh, wow. This looks, this looks yeah. like I would I was like. Just like, ugh. It's ew. gross. Like, why? Is, yeah, Scorn looked disgusting, and so did the trailer. Not the actual gameplay parts, but the beginning of the trailer for Bloodlines. I was like, gross. Get it away. Absolutely not. I want nothing to do with this. And then they showed the actual gameplay. I'm like, that looks fine. Why did you do the other weird shit in the beginning? I don't know. <laughs> yeah. With the, yep. cri- with the Christmas tree and the people with the eyeballs and the face, the mouth yeah. pulled back. Yeah. yeah no their eyeballs, you know, busting out of their skulls. They're basically their mouths almost like slit up into their cheekbones. I was like, gross. It's too yeah. early. It's too early for this imagery. I don't like it. I don't want it. It was really disturbing. Yeah, I guess we can just talk about Vampire the Masquerade. Bloodlines 2, then. Uh, This is a game that's also going to be compatible with Smart Delivery. And this is a Paradox Interactive game. What monster will you be? Enter the world of darkness and rise through vampire society. Experience Seattle, a city full of alluring, dangerous characters and factions. In the sequel to the cult classic, your choices, plots, and schemes will change the balance of power. Yeah, like, the, the dude's... With all the, I mean, all those characters were missing their eyelids, and I think yeah, that was the most disturbing disgusting. part. Their eyelids yeah. had been. Ooh, I didn't off, notice just, that. Ooh. Yeah, that's why their eyes look so. I mean, granted, having their cheeks and their mouths like slit is very disturbing as well. But the fact that they're missing their eyelids is really like. Ooh. But that said, I'm I'm really excited about this game, and Simer, I think you will like this game. I have a feeling. No, I actually, I think I will too. I th- it was just because that was the opening yes. scene that the game came in on. I didn't know what it was at that point, and I was just like, "Ew, what the hell is this?" Absolutely not. I won't play this game. And then once I re- once it like went a little farther, I was like, oh, never mind. This is <laughs> I do want to play this game. I just really hate the opening scene that they chose to go with. <laughs> like, please no. Like, but I like the girl in the club who basically ate a man on the dance floor. That was cool. Oh yeah, that was really neat. I yeah. was wondering what kind of game this was because every character they were showing before I figured out was Bloodlines 2 looked like an asshole. I mean, you had the dude with the family around the Christmas tree. You had the dude dancing in his like a top sky rise with blood on the window and it's like well none of these people look great and i feel like you know there's not really games ever made just purely about assholes where you take the role of a butthole but then as soon as i saw the glowing eyes i said oh it's this vampire and it was when and i take the role I... of a butthole <laughs> okay i mean it could be a game go ahead and make it i'll back you on kickstarter but what's interesting is i i found this about myself i love a good vampire game I, actually it doesn't have to be a good game to be fair, I've only played two <laughs> vampire games. I'm thinking out loud here. Give me a I shit played, vampire game, please. Give me a shit vampire game. I played vampire, vampire, however the fuck you say that. And then this one looks really good, too. And I love the shit out of True Blood. Just saying. But uh, I, something about it. Just I love the the darkness and the gothicness of the setting of, of and, and in this game, it sounds like it's going to be very customizable from the character you play to the decisions you make to the background you give yourself. You can do some inner plot scheming you can put factions against each other and it's all going to affect the way you play the game if you feed on humans or you don't feed on humans i'm very excited about it yeah no it looks really cool i just hope that that scene with the people on the christmas tree is not a real thing and it was just made for a trailer well deep silver i want nothing to do with that oh i was gonna say deep silver i'm thinking about chorus um like i think that we know from history that a lot of these cinematic trailers 
that are part of like launch lights or big reveals don't end up being reflective of gameplay anyway. So keep yeah. your fingers, yeah, I think keep your fingers crossed. Probably also just to depict the fact that it's kind of a recurring theme in vampire, whatever that they've lost their humanity, even though they look like humans, they've, they're just terrible, awful creatures. And some of them are just the biggest ass buttholes, if you will, in the world. And I think that's probably more what I was trying to show. This ain't yeah. a world to fuck around with. Um, well, I guess so we, we can talk about... back? Huh? We hop back? We can hop back to... Chorus. Chorus. This is a deep silver game. Discover Chorus, an immersive single-player experience that tells a mature and dark tale of redemption. Take control of Nara, an ace pilot with a haunted past and forsaken, her sentient starfighter, as they embark on a personal redemptive journey to challenge a relentless foe and take down the dark cult that made her. This is a true evolution of the space combat shooter. So I thought this... Pew, pew, pew. Exactly. I thought this game looked really neat. At first, it, I thought it was Outriders, and then I remembered it said World Premiere, and I was like, obviously this can't be Outriders, uh, just because of the art style and the kind of dark sci-fi vibe I was getting. So... I went to Gamasutra and got a little bit more information about this title because I thought that it looked really cool. And essentially, this game, um, I think, looks like right up my alley. So they say that it is a single-player game, story-driven, that invites Gators to unlock devastating weapons and mind-bending abilities as they fight the free galaxy from the circle, fight to free the galaxy from the circle, an oppressive cult that will stop at nothing to ensure complete subjugation. Tobias Severin, studio director at Deep Silver Fish Labs, who are the deve developers on this game, said that we're delighted to announce this exciting new IP, from the beginning, our focus has been on delivering amazing moment-to-moment -moment gameplay to evolve the spirit of classic space flight shooters. We are fully leveraging the power of Gen 9 hardware, allowing us to create richer, more detailed, and ray-traced environments at all at 4K, 60 FPS. So more about the game. We already hear, heard about Nara, the warrior. It says that there's going to be this dark new universe teaming with mystery and rife with conflict. It says one pilot, one ship, one living weapon is kind of the marketing talk. It says attain a powerful and distinct weapon in combat upgrades. Master your ship's unique drift mechanic and deadly mind-bending abilities, which is crazy, including extrasensory perception, teleportation, and telekinesis to overcome massive hordes of enemies and take down titanic battleships. Chain your powers together to become the ultimate living weapon. It says you're going to play as dual protagonist Nara and her sentient AI companion and starfighter Forsaken on a personal journey of redemption. I thought that, that was really kind of fascinating that they made it the single player experience, but you're going to have dual protagonists and one of them's an AI. I'm really curious to see the gameplay of this game. Are you excited about the dog fighting stuff? No. I hate dog fighting. Okay. It makes me <laughs> nauseous. Yeah. When I saw, I was like interested in this until they showed some of that. And I was like, Man, I probably won't like this game. I think I like this game in theory, but I don't think I will actually enjoy playing it. Yeah, yeah same. I like the idea of it. But uh, I, when, I, when I was watching this too, Andrea, I immediately thought of you as well. I'm like, this looks like a game you would like. It's all spacey. It has a badass female protagonist. Get to shoot shit. It does. It does. So I looked up a little bit more about Fish Labs because I was like, oh, gosh, I don't remember what they worked on. Um, so they are part of, they've been part of Deep Silver since 2013. They worked on the space action shooter Galaxy on Fire Manticore and the tactical zombie brawler Dead Island Survivors, if you guys remember that game. Um, and now they're developing, of course, Chorus. But anyway, a little bit more info on that game in case you were curious, like I was. Another game. Actually, are you fan of Dirt? Are you a dirt Andrea, fan? Andrea, I assume? Maybe? Yeah. Yes, no? no. If anybody would be, it would it be It would Andrea. be me. Yeah, she likes the racing. No, okay, I've, so. I've never been a big dirt fan, but what they're doing with Dirt 5 has me intrigued. Yes, yeah, so this is a game from Codemasters. Ushering the next generation of racing, Dirt 5 writes a new chapter in the legacy of dirt. Bolder and braver than ever before. New features, new innovations, and a fresh approach make Dirt 5 a hub of amplified off-road racing, style, and culture where no two races are ever 
the same. So this is interesting because there is a take career mode, which is kind of, I'm assuming like the campaign mode and Nolan North and Troy Baker are in it. Yeah, yeah. so um, they sent out a press release after the episode and it says the narrative driven career mode is bigger in every way with event types and challenges across some of the toughest terrain before hitting the track, get creative using the livery editor library. I always get that word wrong uh, with more customization options than previous dirt games. Dirt five features nonlinear progression paths. So players can choose more of the events they want. It says it heralds the return of split screen for up to four players, uh, full list of game modes coming in the future. But the voice talent, as Brittany mentioned, includes Nolan North and Troy Baker, which is, I gotta, I gotta so admit, fun. I'm surprised that those two are in dirt, but that's cool. Why yeah. not? Get that paycheck, buddies. Exactly. You do so you. Make your money. Is there a reason that you're not into the dirt games? I know nothing about it, really, so. My it- desire to play a lot of arcade racers has really waned over the years. I used to be super into arcade racers and spent a lot of time playing them. And I've really kind of supplemented that time with first-person shooters and third-person shooters. And so I'm playing a lot less racing games and a lot more shooters these days. I've never gotten into the Dirt series, mostly because I just never really experienced it or had anybody recommend it to me. Obviously, I've known people on the PR team for Dirt for quite some time who have been desperately trying to recommend it to me to be like, please play Dirt. And I just, <laughs> I don't know. There was just something That's about a funny it. funny name. Yeah. I mean, yeah. The, in fairness, like some of the previous Dirt games didn't obviously look nearly as good as Dirt 5 looks with, you know, obvious reasons. This Xbox Series X gameplay. But there was just something about it that just never grabbed me. And I can't quite put my finger on what that is. That's okay. You don't have to put your finger on anything, baby girl. Thanks. I don't, I don't want to put my finger on stuff. <laughs> <laughs> Next up, we have Madden NFL 21, which we do not need to read the description for that. But it's I Madden. Guess what was interesting about this is I don't know, I don't remember whether or not it was stated that this was going to be part of Smart Delivery. But what Madden and EA are doing that's a little different with this, I'm going over to the press release. Um, they're talking about upgrading, you know, your Xbox One version to the Xbox Series X version. And to receive the offer, players must purchase Madden NFL 21 on Xbox One by December 31st, 2020, and upgrade to the Xbox Series X by March 31st, 2021. So it's they're doing it, but it's a more limited window. It's that's what it sounds like. Yeah, you have about okay three months exactly three months to uh to upgrade and well if you count that if as still sort of being part of it as smart delivery there's only actually three games on here that are not currently confirmed for it so the ones that are not currently confirmed for smart delivery are bright memory infinite which we've already talked about scorn which we will talk about and the medium, which we will also talk about. Every, everything else, except for this little caveat on Madden, is confirmed for smart delivery. Which is really nice. I would guess yeah. that's probably because those titles are not planning to come to current gen. That they're only going to next gen. That would be a decent guess. But given what we saw of them, which is not much yet, I, th- I think, yeah. Yep. You might be onto something, Andrea. Who knows? Then we have another Brit-looking game called Scarlet Nexus. Take on the role of Yuito Sumagari, a new recruit to the OSF, aiming to become an elite psionic like the one who saved him as a child. So the description of this game is kind of bonkers. Uh, you take on the role to talent and psychokinesis and explore the uh, what am I, the futuristic city of New Himoka and uncover the mysteries of a brain punk future caught between technology and psychic abilities. So essentially, there's been a psionic hormone discovered in human brains. So people get extra sensory powers, but then these things called the others descend from the sky and they have a hunger for human brains. And they look like legs with corsets with flowers. Flowers. With yeah. This I is... actually really liked this. I thought Did this you? was super Yeah, I know. I mean as soon as it came on, I was like, yeah, this is some me shit. Cause like it's <laughs> it's like it's so exactly weird, what Britt said. I like 
I like the I like that they're flowers because why? Because I I like pretty things and I don't <laughs> I don't like children screaming, which is happening right now. That's okay. Um, but so I just thought like the monster the, the monster design was interesting. It also reminded me of like Persona. So I was oh, I was yeah. just kind of I was like ooh okay cool. And then they talked about psychic powers and I was like yes yeah, sign me up absolutely I'm there. And then they have like swords and shit. I'm like yes this is yes I will play this game. Yeah, and it's from the Minds Behind Tales of Vesperia, which is another very good, wonderful RPG. So I'm with you, Simon. This totally looks right up my alley. We can play it and bond over it together. And we'll yes. tell Andrea how we'll, it is. We'll destroy the flower monsters. We'll be like, because again, it's so weird. I'm like, just, I hate really grotesque things. So I like that these monsters, although they have grotesque elements because they look weird with the arms and the legs kind of sticking out the strange appendages. Um, <laughs> They have they're also they're also beautiful, design. right? They're also beautiful. They're also beautiful flowers, and it's so a beautiful like, work of art. It's a nice See, dichotomy. My, my first mind went to Silent Hill. I thought these looked like some Silent Hill motherfuckers, but um, I guess if you know, first I can see Persona too. Yeah, yeah. Or Persona does have we, monsters, yeah. So. How str- yeah, the, uh, that's honestly what I thought of. <laughs> big monsters. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and then the next game, Scorn, is it is a no thank you, no thank you, sir. <laughs> I'm with so you. Ub Studios. It's an atmospheric first-person horror adventure game set in a nightmarish universe of odd forms and summer tapestry. It is designed with the idea of being thrown into the world, isolated and lost inside this dreamlike world. You will explore different interconnected regions in a lawn- non-linear fashion. Every location contains its own theme, story, puzzles, and characters that are integral in creating a cohesive world. So it essentially sounds like a mindfuck. So this game actually was announced three years ago and I didn't realize that until I started digging into it and I watched the gameplay on IGN because they had an eight minute gameplay um, preview back in 2017 and there was gameplay back then which leads me to believe that if they're showing nothing but cinematics now that I think probably a lot of it has been scrapped if not the whole thing and they're yeah they maybe rebooted it yeah they're probably rebooting it but it reminded me of a of doom in the sense of, of how grotesque it is and how kind of like fucked up it is but the gameplay itself was really boring it was just essentially just walking along these really kind of boring hallways and ground i don't know how early this footage was or like what the point of releasing that footage was to be supposed to be three years ago if it was just a tease or if it was like whatever it was but it looks really fucked up like your gun in that in that gameplay footage is like a spine yeah <laughs> It's a spine, and then there's all these, like, muscly tendon things. And to reload, you have to remove the bone from, like, the tissue and then put, like, the bullets inside the tissue, and then yeah, it turns into a shot. Do you know what I'm talking about? I'm not I'm not playing this game. No. There's, there's <laughs> like, no – you couldn't pay me enough to play it. Like, I just don't – actually, that's not true. You could definitely pay me enough to play it. But, <laughs> like, I – this Everybody is has a ever, price. <laughs> I would not – seek this game out i will not seek this game out and i will not play it like this does not look like a thing i want to spend my time in it looks gross and then there was the other like super gnarly thing where it was like a weird uh like a penis yes and then it was like dripping white goo and i was like come on oh yeah what is this what is this phallic nonsense get out of here nonsense (laughs) yeah the whole thing looked like super gross yeah hard hard pass for me i I'll, it's okay. I'll I'll sacrifice my sanity and I'll play it for you, ladies, because I know you're very curious and you want to know about these penis leaking things. And there, oh, there's enemies too that look like colon, like anus colon things walking around. Like it's fucked up, but I'm here for it. That's all. We'll move on. All right. Next we have Second Extinction, which Andrea and I for a second were like, is this Turok? This yeah, is an I, also, I was like dinosaurs. <laughs> This is an intense three-player cooperative shooter where your goal is to wipe out the mutated dinosaurs that have taken over the planet. Teamwork is vital as you adopt the role of one of the survivors using a unique combination of weapons, abilities, and skills to take on the vast number of enemies. Fight through a maelstrom of bullets, bombs, teeth, claws, and more. Oh, and gore. It's up to you to reclaim Earth. It kind of reminds me of, like, Earth Defense Force, but with dinosaurs instead of giant bugs. There you go. Yeah, it's being kind of described as a Left 4 Dead co-op shooter from Avalanche Studios, developed by systematic reaction which is their self-publishing division and like i said it's three-player co-op and it sounds like the goal the routine of it is you pick a mission land planet side complete the objective get to extraction point upgrade your abilities and then you can take on harder missions so it sounds like it's and you can play by yourself if you want to but it's geared around obviously grouping up with other players that looks pretty cool i like me some dinosaurs i agree 
For a second, I thought we were talking about the ascent. And I was like, oh, nope. no, we're talking about second extinction. Um, I, I'm down. Let's try it out. Let's go. We got three people. Let's rock and roll and shoot some dinos. Yeah. I'm in. Okay. The next one is the medium. Another break. Nope, oh, no, the ascent. the ascent. I did. I skipped the ascent. Sorry. This is a neon giant curved digital game. It is a solo and co-op action RPG set in a cyberpunk world. The mega corporation that owns you and everyone, the ascent group, has just collapsed. Confusion and chaos ensue. Security and order and disarray. And without protection, everyone is left to fend for themselves. Stop gangs and hostile corporations from taking over and discover what really happened in this explosive sci-fi shooter i like your marketing voice it's very nice thanks i one of those games where i saw the first half of the trailer and was like oh my god yeah cool fun and then they cut to the gameplay and i was like oh yep yep yeah yeah all right then this it's a style top down shooter yeah no nope. cool i have no desire to play this game i thought it was a twin stick they didn't confirm that it's twin stick but if it's an isometric shooter no thank you yeah i'm just not really big into those either but yeah, it's not something I will definitely play day one, but after the game comes out, or maybe we get more preview coverage. I'm not I'm not turning a blind eye to it. I think I'm I'm still into it, but just like I'm not you know, if it wasn't the isometric shooter or twin stick or whatever it was, I would be more excited. All right, let's go down to the brick game. The medium. So this is Bloober Team's new game. They are the ones who did Layers of Fear, Layers of Fear 2, Observer, and Blair Witch. It is a next-gen psychological horror game from Bloober Team, the makers of Blair Witch. Oh, I just literally said all that. You play as Marianne, a medium living in two worlds, the real one and the spirit one. Haunted by a vision of a child's murder, you travel to an abandoned hotel resort, which many years ago became the stage of an unthinkable tragedy. There you begin your search for difficult answers. The medium soundtrack is a collaboration between two composers, Bloober Teams, oh my god. Um, Arka, Very Polish name. <laughs> Mr. Polish Man, Arka Dietzis-Rykowski, and Akira Yamoka of Silent Hill fame, reflecting the game's most important theme, duality. This is a game that also looks very weird, and it looks it looks like it's going to be very different from what Bloober has done in the past, which is great. I think they're a very talented development company, and I think they could make some really great horror shit. But it essentially just starts off with a woman who's getting an ultrasound, and then next thing, where she looks all happy, she's suddenly in a church. It looks really dark and fucked up outside. There's, like, a detective-looking man smoking a cigarette. She stabs herself. She's bleeding, then she's not bleeding. I'm not sure what's she's happening. She's not stabbing herself. She's gripping a knife very tightly. Oh, I thought she was stabbing herself. No. Oh, okay. Mm-hmm. It's some. It's one of those things where like you're holding something you don't realize you're gripping it so tight, and then you see then the blood, and she lets go of the knife, and then it's like, okay. oh, she was holding a knife. Which I, I think it, to me it, it read as like she didn't know she was holding a knife until like the blood started to drip. I don't know. But that's, yeah, that's it was, how I, I don't know. I don't really understand it. And I was so I went to the medium's website to kind of get a grasp of, I mean, kind of have an idea what kind of game this is. And there's this image of this, like, I don't know, maybe eight-year-old girl and her arms and legs are nothing but these weird tendon things. So it looks really fucked up and grotesque, which I guess is to be expected from Bloober Team. But uh, again, that's another Brit game that for some reason I'll play. I don't know what's wrong with me. Why am I in this? As soon as this came up, I was like, this is Brittany and not me. Like, this is 100% Brit. I don't don't want really anything to do with this. I think it's cool that the composer behind Silent Hills is, is part of it. That's oh, neat. yeah. No, that's great. And I think Bloober Team's games have been really popular, but I think they've had a you know very niche following. And it, maybe, you know, with this game, they can really branch out and get some more eyeballs on their work because I think they're very, very talented. So, Brittany, and then, I have a question yeah. for you. As somebody who's played a couple of Bloober Team's games and knowing what they look like from an art style and gameplay perspective, do you think that that trailer that we saw today is representative of what the game will look like? Or do you think that that was purely cinematic and the gameplay will not look like that? I I mean, realistically, I think that's cinematic and the game will not look like that. I mean, it depends on, like, aesthetically, I think it will go for a more realistic, you know, look. But as you know, it's, it's just hard to say. Like, I, I've been burned by CG so many times, man. Yeah, I think but- that was my frustration with a lot of the press conference, which we'll get into in a little bit. But I think I look at something like Layers of Fear or even like Blair Witch from a graphics perspective and go, how is a team like Bloober making the jump from what those games look like to what that cinematic trailer looked like? 
The short answer is they're probably not. That's probably just a cutscene that will never be indicative of gameplay. But I just didn't know because I don't really have a lot of experience with their games if that's possible. And so I'm, I'm kind of like, okay, I'm on the fence about how I feel about developers at this point in the year 2020 being so misrepresentative with what the game is actually going to look like. No, that's totally fair. And I think that was something like you said, well, I guess we'll talk about that in the, um, after we talk about the next game, but yeah, I mean, I'm thinking about Bloober's game and layers of fears on PC layers of fear two. I played on PC and I played Blair Witch on Xbox one recently. I think it was, and none of the games ever, they weren't ugly by any means. They looked good, but they weren't, you know, like that jaw dropping, oh my God, this game is so beautiful. But, um, so who knows? We'll see. Actually, Blair Witch wasn't too bad, but it was a lot of trees. You hate we those We all know how much you hate trees. Uh, you know, know what I'm you don't too. hate, Brittany? The oh, next fuck, game, girl. which I'm going to read so you can grunt. Thanks. Yakuza Like a Dragon. Just announced today, Yakuza Like a Dragon, an explosive new entry point in the acclaimed Yakuza series, mm. will be releasing as a launch title on Xbox Series X. We are also excited to announce that Yakuza Like a Dragon will support Xbox. Well, yeah, it's on smart delivery. Great. Great. Um, that, yeah, we already know what that means. Oh, wow, did it not tell you anything about the game? This is a terrible blurb. Uh, <laughs> it really says absolutely nothing about Yakuza, except that it's the new entry point in the series. So I'm going to go to the actual page and see if there's more, because that was a horrifying write-up. Um, <laughs> Good job, okay, Xbox. Here we go. Here we go. Thanks, Xbox. <laughs> it is an underdog story about fighting for what you believe in, even when you're up against impossible odds. You'll step into the shoes of Ichiban Kasuga, a low-ranking grunt of a low-ranking Yakuza family, betrayed alone and left on the brink of death by the man he trusted the most. So this is set in Yokohama, Japan, and you will fight your way up from rock bottom in dynamic RPG combat as you gather a party of misfits from the outskirts of society, each with their own deep ba backstory and motivations. You level up 19 different jobs from... Uh, traditional RPG fair. Uh, Ichiban is not a warrior or a mage. He can be a bodyguard, a musician, or even a chef. Each job has completely new, has completely unique strengths and skills, and you can mix and match to find the right setup for any encounter. Oh yes. Okay. So obviously this game's been out in Japan since January, and so I mean, you know, if you want to know what this game's all about, you can look it up. I'm trying to not learn anything about it as much as I can. But um, what's interesting about this is we've been waiting for that Western release date because a couple days ago it got its own Steam page. And usually when that happens, that means there's something going on, which is why I thought that we could have gotten that announcement today, which turned out to be the case. So what's interesting about this, because I got the press release and I have an email in to Sega, um, is Sega PR, because it's a little confusing. So it's coming as a launch title, the next, box, uh, next gen Xbox Series X. And then mm -hmm. it's, it'll also release simultaneously on Xbox One X, Windows 10 PC, PlayStation 4, and Steam. So what I think is going to happen here is we're going to... I think it's going to come to PS4. It could come to PS4 before it comes to Xbox. And I think it's... it's okay, am I making sense here? Because it's, it's kind of weird. Because when it says, you know, oh, it's going to be a Xbox Series X release, you think immediately, okay, well, this is coming when the new console comes. But then it's like, no, that's not necessarily what that means. Because the, the moment this game releases for Xbox, it's going to become a smart delivery title, technically, right? And PlayStation 4 doesn't have their release date yet. And I feel like if they're what in... So anyway, I think it's coming sooner rather than later. I, I don't think we have to wait until holiday. I think, yeah, no, I think that the idea that PlayStation doesn't have a release date yet is just purely a, a marketing window thing. I bet Xbox paid... Sega to make sure that they could talk about the game exclusively in a very specific window. And then PlayStation is going to be able to talk about their version of the game in a different window. I would not worry about it. This game is definitely coming to PlayStation, right? Like, oh, yeah. I mean, there is a world in which Xbox would pay for exclusivity, but I doubt it. Um, not for this title. So especially since it's been released, <laughs> as you mentioned, already in Japan. So I, I wouldn't I wouldn't read too much. I wouldn't read too much into that. No, it's just, uh, you know, I want my release date, Andrea. That's what I want. She's like, I just want the game. Well, you, just want the game. well you got, you've got that it's a launch title. So hypothetically, that means you should be getting it hopefully before the end of the year, but can mean that within the first like, quarter of when the consoles launch. So 
I would say by February 2021 at the absolute latest is my guess. But more likely um, November, you, I would say October, November. My guess is that it's going to come within the next maybe three to four months and th- on PS4, on Xbox One. And then it'll technically be an Xbox One X smart delivery title when it does release on the new consoles. Because it, it's the, the wording's very nebulous, but we'll see. We'll see. I'm, so I gotta, I gotta hold on to something. Are here. you? You're obviously not gonna wait for next gen. You're gonna play this on current gen. Oh, God. Yeah, and that. Oh, yeah, and that's the other thing they brought up is you know it, because it is smart She's delivery. Like, God no. God no. <laughs> Absolutely um, not. It is cross cross save as well. So if you do play, we'll just use Xbox right now because we know that's what's confirmed on the Xbox One. You'll be able to transfer your data over to the Xbox Series X. So cool. you can do both. Um, yeah. It was good to see the footage, and it was really exciting. I'm really happy, actually, that they aren't using English uh, voice actors for this. It sounds like they're keeping the Japanese, which I personally prefer. I know some folks aren't a big fan of that, especially since the last installment from the studio, Judgment, was in English. And the English actors did a phenomenal job, but I just I like the Japanese voice acting personally. So. Yeah. You like and it, you I like. mean, it makes, and it makes sense for this, too, because there are characters – that are reoccurring in this game that have been in all the other prior games and they've only ever been in Japanese as well. So it would be weird to give these characters that we've had for so long English voice actors. Do you think I'm going to be okay if I just... Because I have I tried downloading the Yakuza... Whichever Yakuza is on Game Pass. I forget the... the addendum zero. on the end of it. It's not Zero. It's something Kiwami? else. Yes, that one. Yeah. And I was like, you know what? I feel like old game is old. I kind of don't want to play... I mean, it's not, not even in a bad way, but I was just like, eh, I know the new one is coming out and I kind of just want to go to the new one. Like, do you think I'm going to be confused or do you think it'll be fine if I just jump in? No, this is going to be an all new cast of characters, an all new location. There are going to be some throwbacks, like I said, with some of the more iconic characters in this one. I would say, I mean, Kiwami's like good, but Yakuza 0 is, I think, one of the best. That and Kiwami 2 are my favorite. Uh, I would say, though, if you're interested in trying a game that's newer, try Judgment. Because that takes place in the same city. It's the same sort of game, just different characters. And uh, the you same don't city deal... as what? As the new one? Kamurocho, yeah. Okay. Uh, well, no. So Kamurocho oh. is the one in 0 through 6, and it's also in Judgment. In Yakuza 7, you're getting a city in Yokohama. So it's going to be different. Got it. Yeah. Cool. So I would say if you want, if you know, you don't have any interest in Yakuza, if you're like, oh my god, there's seven games. I mean, just seven. There's like eight or nine, actually. But like seven that are like readily available in the timeline. You're like, that's way too much. I would try Judgment. It was one of my favorite games of last year. No surprise there. And it's essentially Yakuza, but with a different cast, a different story. So, cool. Do it. Yeah, I like his I like his hair and how it went all, got all wild when he came out of prison. Oh, yeah. He was oh, like, God. by the way, I grow into this out. Which This is the this is the look. We're doing uh, the look. Oh, it looks so good. And there was a remix of a... Um, Oh, receive and bite you which is like an iconic song for one of the characters and hearing that in the background it was so good i've watched that trailer like five times already it's... <laughs> that sounds correct yep anywho okay so now i guess that we kind of talked about all of the games that were more or less announced um how do you feel like expectations were set and or met um i don't personally i think I actually, I don't know. It, it was it was a little bit of a mixed bag for me. What do you think, Andrea? I thought that they showed some really cool games. I thought that the mix of games was really well done. I think them positioning this as gameplay running on Xbox Series X was super fluffy marketing speak and was intentionally misleading. And I say that because by this time... The marketing teams for the platforms and for development studios know better. They know that the gaming audience is incredibly discerning. They know that outlets like Digital Foundry are going to pick apart any digital asset that they put out. This is why you get all of these very indicative disclaimers about running an engine, pre-alpha footage, optimize for Xbox, et cetera, et cetera, right? Because they know now that these are the questions that the audience, the consumers are going to ask, like, is this actually gameplay? And it's frustrating that now, after being in this digital era where consumers are much savvier today than they were when the Xbox 360 launched, for example, even more so than when the Xbox One launched, 
that we still are dealing with these frustrations around these kind of like cloak and dagger terms about what we're seeing. And it's frustrating. I love the gip hype moments of these types of reveals. And there was a lot of chatter online about how people are missing or are anticipating missing those E3 moments from this year and how we're going to be getting things like we got today and how it's, we really have to look at that and go, you know, is this what we can expect from Xbox? I, I feel like Xbox made the right move by getting out in front of PlayStation and saying, Hey, we're going to talk about our partner titles first because we know that partnerships matter, particularly in a launch year when they're probably only going to have one standout first party game. Obviously, we're going to hear from them in July about what all their first party slate looks like. But I think the assumption is it's Halo Infinite and that's what you're getting. And if Halo ain't your bag, then you're probably going to be buying Assassin's Creed Valhalla on PlayStation 5. Right. And so I just was really hoping for a little bit more gameplay from Xbox. And I thought we got a lot of really cool looking cinematics. But when you position your press conference, digital event, whatever you want to call it, as gameplay for Xbox Series X, I want to see gameplay. I want to see more gameplay. I want to see HUDs. I want to see I live demos. the case of the one game that did show us gameplay. And then I was like, oh, never mind. <laughs> I was like, I already forgot the name of it. Shit, You're talking about it? Ascent. The ascent. Yeah, the I mean, ascent, where I was like, oh, cool. And then I was like, oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> but like nobody wants to see a top down isometric game that's pushing the boundaries of what the next gen hardware can do. That's not impressive. And I don't think anybody would have minded seeing gameplay from a game like Ascent. I'm sure there's plenty of people out there that are like, I think that game looks fucking awesome. I'm super excited to see more about it. I just think this comes back to the messaging that Xbox put out there about talking about we're going to be showcasing these cool partnership titles that are pushing the limits of gameplay for Xbox Series X. And I just did not see that. I saw some really beautiful cutscenes that looked great, but I'm going to be clear. I did not see anything in that press conference that could not be potentially running on PlayStation 4 Pro or Xbox One X. And that's kind of a bummer. And I am looking forward to seeing more in July but again I just want to see more if you're going to tell me you're showing me gameplay show me gameplay that's all rant over no that's very that's very valid and you can't like you said it all comes to expectations I mean we just saw PlayStation flub this with a beautiful voiced Cerny stream not that long ago right and you know Xbox did tweet out the hype and this is like my little they didn't say the hype that's like my little sentence there but they said tomorrow changes the game or rather the games do the changing i think it's going to be really tricky to communicate these next gen consoles because as we were talking about on the stream andrea this is a weird gray muddled line between generations it's not like you have that generational leap from xbox 360 to xbox one or in playstation 3 to playstation 4 in a way that you can just see visibly through a trailer watching on your pc or on your phone or whatnot Because the games are going to look prettier. They are. But you're not going to see that huge, oh, my God, for a while. I guess if ever. I don't know how much better graphics can get on a console. It'll get better, but the the key part will be the way it runs. And that's just it. Yeah, the thing, you're going to notice little things that I think, like 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 Sam said, shorter loading screens, that SSD that I've learned so much about since we've been talking about all these next-gen things. But also, you know, little things like water effects or maybe hair effects, little things that you can't really pick up on while watching a trailer, right? That's yeah. The, well, or the that first one was a great, actually, a very good example. That's, of, yeah, right. Of showing off what theoretically, you know, the console can do is handling that quick movement of shooting, precise movement, having abilities of some kind also going while there's particle effects flying around while there's enemies attacking you and having it all run very smoothly. That is like, if they had done, you know, showed more of that, I think maybe we would have felt a little bit more strongly about it. But then again, these are partner titles, so I don't really know how much they can. Yeah. They are reliant on what the partners are building in order to be able to show it. That being said, I don't think, I feel like gaming marketing in general is a little bit too much of like hello how do you do fellow kids and it just feels the need to overhype yes. to a, a confusing degree because 
they already know the audience that they are speaking to is informed. It's a lot easier to bullshit an audience that's not informed, right? Like, yes. you're like, oh, this thing does zero to 80. And you're like, cool. And you're like, no, it doesn't. It really doesn't. That's not a thing. Um, but when you're trying to teach that to, or like sell that to somebody who knows that what you're selling is kind, I mean, it's not complete bullshit, but it's, we know that horse isn't brown. You just painted it that color. Mm. It was white. Like, I don't, these are really strange examples coming from my very overheated brain, but it's, I pick it, I pick it up, girl. I pick it up. <laughs> so like, I just find it odd that it's still, uh, as Andrea has said earlier, like it's still kind of happening. Like just say what it is. Be like, Hey, we're really excited that we have all these partner titles. Yeah. We, th- we think they're cool. We hope you think they're cool. That's it. Like that's don't the it's, it not, it's not revolutionary first tech. amazing revolutionary gameplay. It's yeah. not changing the game forever because no, what do you, it's, it's upgrading your games. It's not changing them drastically. I didn't see one thing in there that didn't look like something that I already could play right now. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. That's, it. that's totally it. And I think that's going to be the thing is now more than ever. And I sound like a fucking PR person on stage now more than ever. It's about the games, but it really is in my mind. I'm getting a PS4 and I'm getting an Xbox One. In my mind, as someone who knows close to nothing they about the tech of all this, they're all going to have bomb-ass all-state drives. Some are going to have more flops than others. Some are going to have really badass controllers. But at the end of the day, their the games are going to look phenomenal. I think the games already look phenomenal as they are now. Big, I, I'll take a prettier game, sure. And I, I'm excited about these you know, faster loading times and whatnot. But at the end of the day, what can your software, what can your hardware play? Like, what games can I Here's play on it? what they should have done. They wanted to get me hot and bothered, which I'm already really fucking hot in this house. And you are bothered. They should have just not a good way. that bitch on and let it run. And let me hear how loud it is. <laughs> <laughs> and if it was just a silent stream, I would have had a single tear roll down my cheek out of happiness. Soft hum. A soft yeah. hum, if you will. Just, yes. you know, gentle white noise would be acceptable. But that's so is it. that the new is that the new criteria? Is can someone fall asleep through it comfortably? <laughs> yes, it is. Can, can it? Can I fall asleep through it comfortably? Does it produce so much heat that I can't be in my house? Does it? <laughs> like, um, how is how are the games themselves running? I have still, God love them. I love these dumb pieces of bricks that I got in this console over here. Like it's, they're stupid. They work somehow. I love it. It's great. But they also just don't run super well all the time anymore. Like, old boys getting a little old. Even the new <laughs> old boys, still a little old. Still having a little trouble booting up sometimes. Oh, yeah. Still can't quite get out of bed. Can't so I, I'm just I'm looking forward to the new shiny model. That again, hopefully is crystal quiet. And just everything runs like snaps, because I can't think of a word right now. It's too hot. Like it's too snappy. Hot. It's smooth like butter. Ooh, smooth like smooth. butter. Yeah. Did I put the butter away? I guess I did. <laughs> did I put the butter away? <laughs> yeah. No, I think we're all. I was like, oh shit! I did that uh, yesterday during the stream. I left my ice out, and then I walked back over, and I was like, well, this is all melted. This is a puddle. Yeah, I think we all are in agreement that none of us are not excited to see more from Xbox, but. We just hope that they don't try to hoodwink us and try it's to blow, to try hard. to pull one over our eyes or whatever, whatever euphemism you want to use. Like, Cause I'm even looking at the tweet and it says for a first look at next generation gameplay. And it's just like, nah, bitch. Really? I mean, it's correct. <laughs> it's, it's not incorrect, incorrect right. but it's also not the level of, I feel like they should know, right? Then they should be like, is this this level of exciting? And the answer is no. Yeah, it's not not exciting. It's just not that level of exciting, right? It's like, gonna it's be just... it's gonna be interesting when PlayStation has their event because I I almost wanted to say I guarantee they're gonna do something similar. You're gonna overhype your oh, shit because that's what you're supposed to do, and sure. I think that's this is just what we have to come to expect. Is oh it's my god, be Mark so Cerny cool. reading us a bedtime story, and we're all gonna <laughs> take a long ass nap. Ooh, I, what I, if the PlayStation 5 Steimer was so quiet, it was comfortable white noise, and it had Mark Cerny reading a bedtime story. That would be terrible while you were playing a game, but it would be fantastic at other times. I'll what if it, it had not... bedtime mode and it's, it's bedtime like mode a, with Mark bedtime fucking mode Cerny. with Mark Cerny, bedtime and he'll just sit there and read you some stories, and you'll go to sleep. Sony, call me anytime. Mark, I'm here for you. I will help you develop this 
Let's oh, make yeah. it happen. I can get rid of all my white noise machines. I can just put a yeah. bunch of white yes. in my bedroom. He has, like, an unnaturally soothing voice. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It does. It's like, hmm. Hmm. Mm. I yes, think, though, that PlayStation oh. is going to look at this and go, we got to show more gameplay. And to their credit, when they did their PlayStation E3 press conferences, we always got like a really nice meaty gameplay demo from one of their first party titles. And I really hope that they bring the goods, whether it's from partners or otherwise, in their first showing of what's happening for PlayStation 5 and show us like the actual gameplay. Like show me a character running around in the world and make it like, a little herky jerky like we actually run in game and not like super smooth don't give me some bullshit multiplayer banter just like like take the fucking like marketing sheen off of it tell the guys at the at the fucking board table or wherever you're doing your dumb meetings to be like get out let's bring actual people who are buy games on the platform in to talk about this it's i mean all they have to do is show and not tell right now they are telling us they are telling us everything they want us to believe, but they should know better because we gamers are salty ass bitches. And all we want is to see it with Amen, our own baby. eyes. Amen, baby. Preach. You know, I thought that was really funny. During the Scarlet Nexus preview on the very bottom in small white font was the following sentence. Game and console in development. Footage representative of expected Xbox Series X gameplay. Yeah, because at this point, they probably, yeah. it's not optimized. It's probably still running on a PC. It's not running on the console yet. Right. Like, that so it's kind of what they have to do but also again just stop it just stop point, stop yes. just stop saying the things you don't need to say you never needed to say most of this shit that you did xbox and i love you i love you dearly and there i still have a lot of friends there but um just cut it out mm. you know and the part of me also wonders how much of this is just us in our own echo chamber because i mean the video game industry is large 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 there's a lot of fucking people who play video games and i feel like the critical circle of it or the people who actually pay attention to this stuff and care about this stuff and are complaining about this stuff might just be so so smaller than we actually think that why cater to us you know what i mean sure except at this point we are the only people you're catering to because there's no product yet to buy so like why would you do a mass awareness push right now when you the consumer audience can't actually do anything with it well like to build hype i guess is what i'm thinking you can build hype but like but for like, a ourselves. lot of marketing, like it really, you need you need a directive. Like you need the person to be able to go and do a thing, and like no, most people can't go and do a thing with this right now. So I'd be curious I mean, to know how many people watched today. I know when we were watching the stream, it was like two hundred and seventeen thousand people on YouTube or whatnot. But it's yeah, I mean like, but remove ourselves from the marketing standpoint. Remove ourselves from knowing what we're watching. And if Joe Blow, who likes Xbox and is only subscribed to xbox on youtube says like oh there's this cool new next generation gameplay they watch that maybe that's all it takes to seal a deal right but i don't think anything in there though would have would have sunk would have you know hook lined and sinker joe schmo right do you i feel like joe schmo would look at that and be like is this a new generation question i don't know you know i feel like i don't know that, I mean, yeah, I also don't I need know to take off I'm my my glasses my narrow ass glasses and i don't know but it's just a thought anyway. sure we all have those. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, baby girl. Thank you. <laughs> <sighs> well, we would love to hear from you guys about what you thought about Inside Xbox. Bring us the hype back because apparently we're all like, wah, wah. <laughs> But we're looking forward to seeing more. I, for one, am very excited to see Halo. I don't agree with my good friend Aaron Greenberg that it's the most anticipated game in the world. I think that's him just being partial to their first party Might studio. Be but a bit of hyperbole. A little bit of hyperbole, but I'm very excited to play it and very excited to see what it looks like on Xbox Series X. But we will, of course, be keeping tabs on when Xbox announces their next Inside Xbox episode, and we'll do another watch along because that was super fun. Um, but the next thing that we have on the docket for E3 style content, I believe, is in a week. When's next week? Keely's having something. Yep the uh, the surprise. The Summer Game Fest schedule, by the way, um, is so interesting. I love that he called it just basically a Google Calendar. Um, so, yeah, so that's uh, May 12th at 9 a.m. 9 a.m. Why is he so early? 
Um, and then uh, Cyberpunk 2077 is having a special broadcast on June 11th, the same day as the EA Play Live. So that's gonna be a fun day. Yeah, it'll be a good one. Oh. All right, everybody, that's going to do it for our first segment. When we come back, we've got a couple more news stories to chat about, and then we're gonna talk about what we've been playing. Stick with us. We'll be right back. What's good, everybody? Welcome back to the second segment of the What's Good Games podcast. This is normally where we talk about what we've been playing, and we will get to that, I promise. But we have so much news because of the Inside Xbox special episode this week that we have a couple more news stories that we'd like to touch on before we talk about what we've been playing. And this week, the second segment is brought to you by Patreon.com slash What's Good Games. If you would like to support our voices in the video game industry and like listening to the podcast or watching our Twitch streams, then you can help support everything we do at What's Good Games by going to patreon.com slash what's good games. We have a variety of membership tiers with exclusive rewards, vlogs, streams, even handwritten postcards. If you want to find out more about how you can support What's Good Games, patreon.com slash what's good games. So the first story in the second block today is a press release that I got from Private Division and V1 Interactive have announced Disintegration's release date. It's going to be launching on June 16th, 2020, and I'm not going to read the entire press release that I have pasted into the show notes here. But for people that are like, Disintegration? What the heck is that game? We talked about this game back at PAX West and at PAX East because we've seen this game a couple of times since it originally was announced. It is created by the 30-person independent studio founded by Marcus Leto, the co-creator of Halo, and it's going to release digitally for $49.99 a PC, PS4, PS4 Pro, and the Xbox One family of devices, including Xbox One X on June 16th, as I had mentioned. And they have some pre-order incentives if you guys want to check those out. I will let you go look those up on your own time. But just as a reminder, it's a sci-fi shooter that blends real-time tactical elements to create an entirely new experience. And what I really loved about what I played is the artistic style of the factions, how each of the different factions felt like they had a really unique personality. The gameplay, the 5v5 PvP stuff that we played felt really fun. And what I haven't gotten to see is any of the single player campaign. So Brittany and I were supposed to go to a disintegration single player event. But of course, because of all the restrictions around the pandemic, the event was canceled. And so we didn't get to go play. But I didn't think that this game was going to be coming out in June. (laughs) No, I mean, great. It's $49.99 digital only makes sense for the times we are in. But I watched the launch trailer and they have these fucking badass grab cycles. That like, I guess it's like a motorcycle, but a gravity cycle because it floats above the earth. Whoa. I mean, I haven't played this game yet because I'm only honestly interested in the single player stuff. But the single player story campaign looks really fun. So do you know, has it been explained what these characters are? Because he looks like like a Cade from Destiny almost. So there's a, a bunch of different types of characters. So there's humans too. Right. So the blurb for the press release says, set in a world ripped apart by famine, scarce resources, and the planet on the brink of destruction. Humanity has developed a process to survive its harsh reality known as integration, in which a human Ooh. brain is transferred to a robotic armature. From the oh. ensuing chaos, an aggressive militaristic legion known as the rayon gain control and begin to impose the once optional process of integration onto the rest of humanity to consolidate their power into it man that's creepy i don't want someone forcing me to be a robot yeah that whole part of the story we haven't really learned anything about because every time private division has shown this game at pax with v1 interactive it's all been the the multiplayer and so i'm really curious to see more about how the story is going to play out Looks good. Next up, Brittany, you want to read this one? I will. I won't do Okay, I won't do it in a Muppet voice. That would be very, <laughs> very annoying. Nintendo sold 13.41 million copies of Animal Crossing New Horizons in six weeks. Wow. Okay, 
Animal Crossing New Horizons had Nintendo's best start ever for a Nintendo Switch game, the company announced on Thursday in its quarterly earnings report. Nintendo sold 13.4 million copies of the game worldwide in its first six weeks of release, which covers the period through the end of April. The vast majority of those sales, 11.7 million, came in the first 11 days from the game's March 20th debut through March 31st. New Horizons is currently ranked 7th of Nintendo's top the Nintendo's list of top-selling Switch games, although that list only tallies sales through the end of the company's latest fiscal year on March 31st, so it uses the 11.77 million figure. Mario Kart 8 Deluxe remains the top seller with 24.7 million copies, while New Horizons currently sits right behind Pokemon Let's Go Pikachu and Pokemon Let's Go Eevee, but it will surely surpass it once the more recent sales are taken into account. For comparison, Nintendo has sold 17.3 million copies of Pokemon Sword and Shield since its November 2019 release date. At that time, Nintendo said those games were among the fastest selling Nintendo Switch games of all time, with more than 6 million units sold during the launch weekend. There's a lot of numbers in this story. During mm-hmm. an investor call, Nintendo shared more details about sales performance, including that there are now 27 Switch titles with sales more than 1 million copies. 18 of those are Nintendo games, and the other 9 come from third party publishers. Wow. Did you like that switch see, is a healthy boy? Did you see that video that someone made? And it's it's a fan video, but it's made to look like a Nintendo Direct, but for Animal Crossing, including all these quality of life improvements that fans want. Yes. Oh, no, so good. I haven't seen it, but I, I've seen other memes of like quality of life stuff that, in my opinion, should happen, but don't know if they will do it. Oh yeah, no, it looked. I mean, I haven't played Animal Crossing in a hot minute, but I was frustrated watching that video, knowing that none of that stuff actually existed. Because it's quality of life stuff that I think, and that was one of my concerns, not concerns, complaints with Animal Crossing, is I should be able to access all the stuff in my storage if I'm inside my house. Why do I have to manually pull shit out? That's dumb. And don't, don't hit me with that. It's supposed to be a slow-paced game bullshit. I'm not buying it. Oh, there's a uh, ton of quality of life problems. I mean, we don't even need to get started on how bad no. the multiplayer component of Animal Crossing is and forcing everybody to watch the loading screen when someone enters the island. It's like, yo, seriously? That's bad. That's a bad multiplayer. Bad. Um, but also, yeah, they uh, whiffed it on the design in a couple of areas. Uh, Nintendo had their fiscal year earnings release, whatever, whatever. They have a report that said that they sold 21 million units last year. So now they have sold 55.77 million consoles since. Wow. Since I, wonder, launch. I wonder if Nintendo has now surpassed Xbox in global sales of Gen 8. I'd say so. Or they're really damn close. I'm curious. But I mean, like, look it. I've got Animal Crossing on my Switch right now. My Switch is here because in my mind I was like, oh, I'll leave my my Switch here at the editing station. So while stuff is rendering, I'll just pull it up, whack a couple trees, sell a couple bushels of fruit. I never thought I would be this person. I went on my first, we're going to talk about this in a minute, but I went on my first turnips run. This week, and I like don't even know who I am anymore. I don't recognize myself. You are myself. queen of the turnips. That's who <laughs> you are. <laughs> Another interesting tidbit is that during this analyst call, a Nintendo representative said that the Switch was, quote, barely in the middle of the Switch cycle. No change to that view. That makes so, sense. That makes sense. Yeah, no, it makes sense. It's just crazy to think about that, right? I mean, I feel like the Switch, I mean, I know it didn't, but I feel like it just came out, but I guess it did come out three years ago. So it Time makes a six year. I know. Keeps on ticking. It does. Into the future. It's just crazy to think of what. I mean, I think the Switch is Nintendo's best console ever. So it's like, wow, what do they come up with next? Probably a beefier, better Switch. I think they keep going this route for sure. Or do they? Ooh, that's a conversation for another time, but that's an interesting thought. Indeed. Stop- uh, but good job, Nintendo. You guys sold a lot of consoles. You're doing the thing. I'm proud of you. Cyber, do you yeah. want this one or the one after it? Probably the one after the it. The one after it. Okay. <laughs> I'll read this one. Uh, EA remains focused on live services with 14 new games this year. Electronic Arts gave investors an overview of its plan for the fiscal year that runs through the end of March 2021. The publisher has 14 games in the works. Quote, we are planning to launch 14 titles this fiscal year, said uh, CEO uh, Andrew Wilson. Uh, his first name is missing from that story. Uh, that it's includes just Wilson. It's just like Wilson. The from, it's like uh, the Wilson. Yeah, home improvement. Uh, home improvement. There we go. Yes, exactly. Thank you. Yes. 
Uh, we're planning on including four new EA sports titles, FIFA, Madden, NHL, and one more unannounced sports title, all of which deliver the mix of creativity, authenticity, and quality that sets EA apart. Of course, the rumor is that NCAA is returning. Um, our F1 21 plans also include four more games drawing on the breadth of our IP from Command & Conquer Remastered to unannounced games for our console and PC players. We'll have more games from indie developers launching this year through EA Partners and two new mobile titles leveraging top IP that will bring players to worldwide. Here's how that all breaks down. We've got the announced... Burnout Paradise Remastered for Switch, Command & Conquer Remastered for PC, Medal of Honor VR, which is already previously announced, FIFA 21, Madden 21, NHL 21, unannounced sports game, NCAA 21, HD remake of an EA game, and then 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, and 14 mix EA partner and mobile games. So before we talk about this HD remake, I just want to say that I think that it's a little disappointing. I know we talked about this briefly in the last segment that they're not just outright saying all of EA's titles will be smart delivery on Xbox one series X slash well, Xbox one won't. slash series X. Because they won't be. No, but that's what I'm saying is I'm disappointed oh. that EA oh, they, they didn't just go is for not it. just saying we're proud to announce that our slate for holiday 2020 and beyond will be smart delivery for Xbox Series X. Like, why not? Just gets have the win, EA. Just say, you know what? Let's just have the win. Connect the dots for me. So what does that have to do with EA All Access? Could one affect the other? 100%. So I think okay. that, it, I mean, but the thing for me is like EA All Access right now only really feels like a value for people who are in the PC ecosystem because I feel like, with Origin and EA Access, the Origin premiere that they have, that that's the best value because I just don't know how valuable people are finding EA Access to be on Xbox. Now, I know that they, I thought that they talked about bringing it to PlayStation or was that just a rumor? EA Access keep track PlayStation. Of everything. Because uh, I know that EA Access was an Xbox One exclusive program for a very specific Steam. amount of time. It says join EA Access on PlayStation 4. Oh, yeah. So it did launch. Okay. Uh, I, was I, was, I thought it did. So, like, right now to me, EA Access does not feel like a good value proposition. You, you get a couple of days early when a game launches. You get a discount, which is nice. But unless you're all in in the EA ecosystem, this like when you think about the cost of EA access versus the cost of Xbox Game Pass, it's just not comparable at all. There you go. But, okay, so let's talk about yeah. this HD remake of an EA game. Because at the bottom of this article from VentureBeat, the last line is, oh, and the HD remaster of an EA game is the Mass Effect trilogy. Just don't expect that to also launch on the Switch, at least not at first. No sources, of course, but it's a very definitive statement by one Jeff Grubb. I love that Jeff is just laying it out there and being like, this is definitely Mass Effect. I want to believe. Trust me. I want to believe. Ugh. And we talked on the Monday show about how, like, we don't care if this comes to Switch or not. Like, sure. No, no. Like, I, I'm not, I would not be wanting to play. It wasn't on the Monday show. It was yesterday on my birthday stream. Oh, was it? Yeah. Oh, you're right. That it broke was. yesterday on my birthday yeah, stream. Yeah, yeah, totally. Dude, was. time's a flat circle. Um, yes, it is. <laughs> thank you for that correction. I, yeah, I, cool. If it comes to Switch, that's great. Um, will I be playing it on Switch? Definitely not. We'll absolutely nope. be playing this on PlayStation Four. Like, I mean, uh, I played it on Xbox too. Like Xbox One. Oh, X, oh yeah. Either one. I'll I just on my hope butt. my my one at uh, it won't happen though because they're not remaking what? it they're just remastering it. It's just more of like my one gripe with the mass but actually it's any Bioware game and they already know this because I bitch about it all the time is the character customizer and then the lighting being so off in it <laughs> that you like can't make a character that looks correct in the blush the is bad man the blush is bad your skin tone is horrible you have terrible acne somehow it's just like yeah. So I I wish that they could at least be like, well, we're gonna actually remake that that part, just that part. We'll just fix the lighting in that one part, and then you don't need to do the graphics, just the lighting. Just fix the lighting. Thank you. Goodbye. 
I wonder if the if an HD remaster of the Mass Effect trilogy is the one game that can get all three of us to get all teary and cry and sentimental. Sentimental. You know what I mean? I that's wouldn't the, cry. You wouldn't? If no. they like open up some like dramatic cinematic and it's all beautiful. I mean, granted, like, you know, how beautiful is a remaster gonna be? Hopefully it's gorgeous. That's what but, I think it would be different if it was a remake, remake in the in the yeah. a la Final Fantasy Seven. I think then maybe I would be um, get emotional about it, but mm-hmm. considering this is just an HD remake, I'm gonna be like, cool, awesome! Everybody who hasn't played Mass Effect before, go get it. I'm probably not gonna play it, to be completely honest. I don't mm-hmm. think I need to play those games anymore. I played them quite a lot. Oh, I would dive right back in because uh, I've only played each game one time. I would absolutely play it again. I I'm conflicted because I I understand Steimer's point. But I don't think the game is old enough to warrant the Final Fantasy VII treatment at this time. Oh, no. I'm not saying they need to. I'm saying that's what would make me teary. Yeah. If it looked, like, really gorgeous. If it, yeah. If they, like, completely remade it and it looked, you know, fucking Maybe Femme Shep's hair they, is blowing in the wind. <laughs> they, what if they remade all the cutscenes, though? That would be... Oh. I mean, that, that would, would go dope. a long way, but I feel like in order to make the lot. overall gameplay better... They would need to definitely polish up the combat because that's probably been one of the weaker links in that franchise. And we say this as people who dearly love the Mass Effect franchise. I would like to see them really kind of fix some of that, some of those cover mechanics, some of the stiff movement around the battlefield. Like it'd be, it'd be great to see them really kind of overhaul that. Man, if they. If they could, it could take, be announced uh, next month. It could, maybe. At okay, so let's minute. just for just for an exercise, let's okay. say our friend Jeff Grubb is wrong. Let's say that he's like got a ba- got a bad intel. What other mm-hmm. HD remake of an EA game could they potentially be talking about? I mean, a lot, but I don't. <laughs> I mean, I, I, the only one that makes sense to me is Mass Effect at this point. So I'm trying to, like, broaden my heart. I'm trying to participate in this well, exercise. Well, it's rumored that Skate 3 is oh, getting so a remaster. That would be a little bit of a wah-wah. I mean, I'm sure it would be great, but I that's the problem with rumors, that they just build you up, and it might not be true. Hmm. Just feeding you lies. Yeah, I'm go- I'm on the, the list of EA games from 2010 to present, because I'm assuming it would be... Well, and then Mass Effect come out, the first one. 2009, Seven. I think. I'd have to okay, the so first one? Little... Yeah. I'd have to look. Yes. It was like 2008 or... No, I feel like it was 07 maybe or 08. I was... Because I was fresh out of college. Mm. And I graduated in 07. Here. So, I mean, Dragon Age Origins, I would shit my pants and it would be glorious. But like, no. Uh, Mirror's Edge is another one I'm looking at. The Sims, nah. They, yeah, well, I don't know. Re- yeah, they wouldn't re- remake re- The Sims. The, the, no, 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 definitely that, not. That NBA, act, yeah, that community is very active in the game. Yeah, I'm looking through all of these, and this is just from 2010. I said a present. I mean, it's none of these are screaming remaster at me. What about Dead Space? That, yeah, that was, okay, that's when I just hovered over would be Dead oh, Space. Oh, that but would be no. an interesting one. I mean, I would think hope they would? so. No, that series is dead in the water. It would do them absolutely Aww. no good to bring it back. Uh-huh. Like, Visceral's like... They're dead, right? That's true, but is, you know, that... I may as well milk that cow for a little bit. The I little mean, bit of juice it's that... got left. Oh, that cow would have a lot of juice. People would lose their shit. But then it's like, okay, well, do you do Dead Space, Dead Space 2, or Dead Space 3? And then, like, what does that mean for the future of the franchise? Why did you remaster seemingly dead IP when, you know, it's more or less been confirmed that, like, EA was like, nah, dog, we don't want any more because anything else to do with this. Money, right. Money. Hmm. Do, 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 do. I do not know. Three. We could do it. I wouldn't. I wouldn't be shocked. Well, but Visceral. Harry Potter and the Deathly Hallows. Oh my God. I'm gonna go with a no on that one. Yeah. So yeah, Mass Effect is what I'm saying. I'm putting all my all my nuts in that basket. All your I eggs got a lot in that basket. Of, my nuts, Simon. I got a lot of nuts and put them well, all in the Mass Effect. you know Effect what? Basket. That's actually a great transition into yeah. our next story. Peggle remaster. Because maybe they're gonna start having all the concerts in Peggle. You it just makes total ruined sense. it. Oh, sorry. Nuts in a basket, Samer. I have so many nuts. There we go. <laughs> okay, next story. World. Cyberpunk 2077 will let you customize your genitals. <laughs> the ESRB has published its ratings report for Cyberpunk 2077, which includes a new bit of information about the, about the game's character creator. 
You can now customize your player character's genitals. Per the report, quote, players can select a gender and customize their character. Customization can include depictions of breasts, buttocks. Is buttocks classified as genitals? <laughs> Didn't think it was. They but shouldn't that's fine. be. And genitalia, as well as various sizes and combinations of genitalias. This would appear to be part of CD Projekt Red's decision not to include traditional gender options in the game, instead offering a, quote, really inclusive, expanded character customization menu. Much of the report, which awards the game an M17 plus rating, focuses on the adult content mentioned in the previous Australian ratings report, including suggested sexual actions, extreme violence and gore, and swearing, my favorite. Wah, wah, wah. Quote, players can encounter events where they have the option to engage in sexual activities with the other main characters or prostitutes, says the report. These brief nude scenes, oh, sorry, these brief sex scenes from a first-person perspective depict partially nude characters moaning suggestively while moving through various positions. Some scenes contain brief depictions of thrusting motions. Other scenes depict a character's head moving towards a partner's crotch. Well, then. Um, so it seems we'll learn more on the Night City Wire event on June 11th, but I don't think they'll really go into much of this because they will not be able to show it. <laughs> I love this story, and it just makes me happy. The more I hear about this game, the more I'm like, oh, yeah. I think it's funny only because I can't imagine, given rating standards, that you'd be able to see any of the genitalia anyway, so it's more of just like a nice, you know, you can feel like, I know that I have this thing because I made the character, but like you're not going to see I would imagine you're not going to see it. Unless there's going to be silly one-off, like, quips, right? When you're fucking the people person. Could, yeah, like, maybe people could talk about it. That would be fun, actually. That would be fun yeah. to have a little VO lines referencing. That would yeah, be a smart yeah, yeah. way to... Yeah. That would be fun. I thought I read a story somewhere, and it must have been something super satire, because I can't find it, about how Keanu Reeves had been recording a whole bunch of, um, oh, like, one-liners commenting on people's like crotch and boobs and shit. But obviously I'm assuming it was fake because I can't find it anywhere because I thought it would have been funny to include, but that would have uh, been funny. That would have been good. Good times. But anywho, uh, it sounds like, you know, it's going to get down and dirty and I'm here for it. It's also possible. I mean, it wouldn't be. Sorry, go ahead. Hmm? Oh, I was going to say, it's also possible that CD project red is including this because they understand that those types of options are more of a personal, have more of a personal meaning to people. Like if you think about gender identity, it's not like people who identify specific ways are showcasing their genitalia out in everyday life anyway. Obviously not. It's illegal to to do that. <laughs> to um, expose yourself yes. on a regular basis? Yes. yes. Yeah, um, don't do that. I think it's more about giving people the option and having them feel like they're seen and they're being included, even if it doesn't actually affect gameplay at all it's like why not let people choose what their genitalia is even if you never see it in the game that's that was kind of my point it's yeah. like yeah you will never see this but it's more of a a not yeah. a tip of the hat to like anybody who wants to do that and feel like their character is more their own or something that they've made yeah i think that's great especially when that comes to the boobs and the butt because we all have different boobs and butt and those are things that you will see well actually it's first person isn't it it's per it, there's third person there is part. third but not, oh, yeah. it's not, I don't think you can play the game in third, but I think it's like, there will be parts where the camera pans out and then it's yeah, third. Yeah, yeah. Cause like That's we've seen cool. that in the demos, right? And the demos you, sometimes it pulls out. <laughs> 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 like in the opening scene we saw where you just got done banging someone. Yeah. Yeah. So. I'm very excited. Be interesting. This game. Very excited. The more I hear, the more I want it. I'm ready yeah. for this M rated game. Me Let's too. go. I'm 17 plus. Guess that's, how old I am. Is it that older than that? <laughs> that's just in Australia, though, right? Yeah, I think probably. Because I've never heard of that rating otherwise. Yeah, no, because it's AO, right? Adults only. It goes from M to AO in yeah. ESRB. And AO yeah. is like a is like a death sentence rating. No, you don't yes. want that. <laughs> if you get an AO Not rating. you're making some porn game. Yeah. Basically, it's Speaking like. Retail retail won't carry you if you're an AO game, so you don't want Which, that. Which right now it doesn't matter. <laughs> yes, very true. You know what? Fair. If That's you're gonna release point. an AO game, now is your chance. <laughs> now is your time to shine. <gasps> Indeed. Uh, we have just a couple extra blurbs here. Hot damn! Fortnite is huge. That's what she said. 
Fortnite has now over 350 million registered players. In April, players spent over 3.2 billion hours in the game. This is according to a Facebook post that Epic Games made. Let's keep the party going with our Party Royale premiere live May 8th at 9 p.m. Eastern. So that's today, the day the podcast launches. Featuring Dylan Francis, Steve Aoki, and Dead Mouse. To celebrate the premiere, you can get the music reactive neon wing back bling for free. If you want details on those events, of course, head on over to the Fortnite website. But, dude, that's a that's, that's a, lot, a of lot of registered players. 350 million. Woo! Not oh, like, yes, it is. Not like we have so to tell Party you that Royale it's popular, is their but. really chilled. It's their non combat right? mode. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. We talked about this last yeah. week, I think. Like, okay, cool. Mm-hmm. So they're just having a big kickoff party. They're just having some no name people showing up for it, too. Yeah. Yeah. Steve Aoki. Who's that guy? Who's that guy? I don't know. <laughs> Never That's heard really of him. Cool. Fortnite's fucking amazing. Yeah. They're crushing it over at Epic. Good job, you guys. Way to keep the party rolling during quarantine. Um, Warner Brothers Interactive announced Mortal Kombat 11 Aftermath, a new expansion for Mortal Kombat 11, is going to be launching globally digital first on May 26th. The saga of the story continues as Fire God Liu Kang, the new keeper of time and protector of Earthrealm, must now enlist the help of unlikely allies and familiar foes to forge a new history as the fate of the two worlds hang in the balance. So we're seeing the return of some characters. We got Fujin, the god of wind, who serves as Earthrealm's protector alongside his brother Raiden. Shiva is back, the four-armed half-human, half-dragon queen of the ancient Shokan race. I'm glad to see Shiva make an appearance as a playable character. Robocop is there for some reason. The iconic and highly advanced cybernetic police officer will make his first appearance in the franchise, continuing the pedigree of popular Mortal Kombat guest fighters. Mortal Kombat is welcoming RoboCop with the voice and likeness of actor Peter Weller, who portrayed RoboCop, of course, in the original 1987 film and in the 1990s sequel. So that's pretty cool. It's a little weird, but whatever. Mortal Kombat is weird. (laughs) Um, I'm into it. And then, of course, we got to see my fave Sindel in the trailer. She looks like such a badass. I mean, obviously, she's been... She was announced as a character for Mortal Kombat and has been available, but her becoming part of the story and being playable in the story looks super cool. Uh, Mortal Kombat 11 owners are going to have access to new stages, including the return of the classic Deadpool and Soul Chamber arenas, accompanied by stage fatalities and fan favorite finishing moves that use the environment to destroy opponents. And friendships are back, you guys. Yay! The trailer the power has... Of friendship. It's it's so it's so funny. So it's got Scorpion doing his classic get over here uh, chain throw, and then he grabs a giant teddy bear and then just hugs it. Oh, that's Scorpion! I was like, oh, friendships. I miss them. And then, uh, (laughs) (laughs) I mean, friendships are important. (laughs) Lastly, uh, Tila Two has a new trailer. Ladies, did you see The Last of Us Part Two's new trailer? Nope. I specifically chose to not watch it. Oh, yeah, because I don't want. At this point, really, any more information about this game. Okay. Well, as somebody who watched it, there were no spoilers. There was nothing new. It was ba- actually, I, yeah. It was basically just Joel and Ellie the whole time. Yeah. But I. Uh, yeah. But what I what my takeaway from it was that this game is going to be super fucking dark. It's going to be super you violent. You didn't get that from the first trailer. The first trailer told me literally everything I needed to know about this game. Oh, yeah, no. I mean, and like, I, I played a demo. I played a super long demo where all I did was kill a bunch of people um, yes. and, and kill a bunch of dogs. Remember how upset I was yes. about having to I kill do the remember. dogs? I was so upset. And then the developers coming over me like, well, you don't have to kill them. And I go, fuck you. You know that I do if I want to survive and not do this 50,000 times. Yeah. Um, or, or I guess if I just do it all baby ass baby mode, maybe I won't have to kill the dogs. You but, pet the dogs instead. Yeah, that, no, no. Wouldn't that be funny? No, you have to avoid them. In they, baby the dogs ass, are baby never mode. your friend. In baby ass baby mode, you get to pet the dogs. <laughs> I know, like, you get that's to pet the them. To, that would be the best. Oh, my God, that'd be great. Oh, man. But, I mean, good. yeah. I'm, I'm conflicted what? because I want to really be excited about this game. And don't get me wrong. Obviously, we're all going to play. We're all excited to play in June. We're glad it has a release date. They announced it went gold. Great. I just... With everything that's happening and how fucking stressful the world is right now, 
I don't know if I'm mentally going to be ready to play this. Yeah, it's interesting because I I agree. Like I just I'm a little worried about it in that sense because obviously when they when they built this experience, they would never have guessed like what would be going on right now. And I just feel like I don't know that I want to go to that place. I honestly wasn't sure I wanted to go to that place when I saw the first trailer. And I really loved The Last of Us. But The Last of Us, the first game, the message is not... I mean, it was a little dark, but it's not this It's dark. not like this. Yeah. It, it's not like this. This is some you-need-therapy-after sort of shit. Yeah, because the first one was more about you versus the oh what i don't know what, what is the name of the, the last of us they're not the, the, clickers. Zombies, the clickers the click well clickers. the clicker is they're one the type of the infect they call it the infected unless the you're infected unless you're talking about the human yeah the fireflies are the one of the one of the no, human factions because you know every post-apocalypse game has a different name for their like undead it's either yeah. zombies or undead or the yeah, infected, yeah, yeah. right yeah and i feel like with that just comes in inherent like okay this is more fantasy but from that second trailer yeah it's like okay no now you're going up against the humans and for some reason that shit is just so much darker because it's probably more realistic right well because humans uh, are de humans are devious humans are malicious so they they can they can hurt you to hurt you and make you hurt whereas like the infected are just like i'm just trying to kill you outright i'm not trying to torture you into death right. humans like, are i don't even know what i'm doing too. i'm just like yeah right you know hive mind attacking you um yeah, yeah. Like, again like honestly the again the first trailer where they um show a character I can't even know if I don't actually know if they revealed who she was at this point but um where she's like hanging on the thing and they're Stabber. like you yeah, got like the knife against her belly and I was like oh God, I'm gonna throw up Please oh don't yeah like, she she was uh, at PlayStation experience that did an interview with her yeah I know who it is but like I don't remember if they've said it okay so I'm just gonna I'm gonna not say anything That's but fine. it was just like there's so many things like that that feels like in this game and I I obviously, yeah, like you said, I'm going to play it, but I'm definitely playing this on the easiest mode and I'm just going to be trying to like kind of get through it versus really experiencing it the way that the first game I, that I did, right? Like the first game I really was taking my time and it was intense, but I didn't feel brought down mentally by it <laughs> where I feel like this might only because it's just damn, like it's just, Storytelling in video oh. games, man. They're intense. The farther we go down this industry, the more realistic it gets and the more it makes it clench. But no, I'm with you. I think it's going to be a very stressful experience. I think regardless of the state of the world, it's going to be a clencher anyway. I think what I'm going to... I mean, I I also feel like a little anxious playing it, but I'm very excited to play it. But yeah. I just think... Uh, I'm trying to think what game I can play to like play it on the side. You know, just kind of give you that emotional buffer. I think Fairy Tale comes out right around then. That might be a good one. Mm. Like a little like JRPG, you know, with some like anime characters, just to offset it a bit. Yeah. No, I, I'm, I had this conversation with some people about games about infection and how people seem to have no problems playing them right now. And I agree. Like when I think about the division two, which is probably one of the most like one-to-one -one games to what's actually happening in the world, because Tom Clancy is set in this very realistic United States experience and it feels like it could be more parallel, that game still feels like it's just a video game. And I can run through the world and take out enemies and take down dungeons and collect loot. And it still feels like it's just like fantasy gaming. Whereas right. Naughty Dog is so good at immersive storytelling and they're so good at atmospheric storytelling that it's going to bring me to a place that it's going to mentally make me, I think, really stressed out in a way that I'm not, I'm not I haven't grappled with if I'm ready to play it right now or not. For, yeah, yeah, for but, me, like the obviously the infected part has nothing to do with it. It's not about the fact that they're they have people who are turning into half mushroom mushrooms. Yeah. It's it's much more about the story of the people, and that's the one that I'm concerned of because, like we've said. People are people are what, what's gonna get you. <laughs> like, it's probably not the monsters. Oh. We are the monsters. So I, the, I don't know. I'm. It'll be fantastic, I'm sure. But I also feel like after I play it, I'm just gonna go to Neil and be like, "Are you okay? <laughs> are you okay, Neil? <laughs> Why did you make this? <laughs> what? Yeah. Like, what's going on, dude? Do you need to talk dude. about it? 
Do you need a hug? <laughs> yeah, if I this need was a like, hug. It's, I mean, obviously, apples and oranges, but you think about Naughty Dog and how good they are at making you feel what they want to feel, and they are not afraid to make you feel what they want you to feel, and they are very good at it. I think this was like Uncharted 6. Or Uncharted, mm -hmm. wait, what, what was last Uncharted? Was it 5 or 4? Four? 4. Four. I love yeah, that you're yeah, like, four. there's been so many Uncharted games. <laughs> Like, there have been a lot. It's been a while since what the last number one did we out. leave off? Well, on? technically, yeah. Lost Legacy was the last one, but yeah. Yeah, but you know, if, if this was another Uncharted game, I think you know we'd all be like, okay, that has that includes people, but that's such a different different flavor of game that it's not. You know, people are assholes in that game as well, but it's, that's you know, there's gonna be fun humor in that game. Nathan Drake and himself is comic relief, but uh, is there any comic relief in The Last of Us? I doubt it. There was, I mean, yeah, there was in the first game. I don't know how much they're going to ever play with that, but they, they definitely had the levity of, like, uh, yeah. with El Ellie, Ellie in the Angel. magazine. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. She's like, oh, why is it all sticky? Like, there's just, like, they had brief moments, moments that they played with because you, and I have to imagine they'll have them here because I can't foresee, a, but obviously Neil and crew and are very wise and they're all really great storytellers so that they have to know they can't just keep you in this dark pit for, like, 20 plus hours you need moments where you're brought up you need moments of downtime in between moments of intensity uh or at least you should have them in my personal you should, opinion yeah. and i think we'll see that you know this, i don't think about the cinematic we saw at e3 a couple years ago when we we're all in that crammed little church you know and ellie's with the oh girl. god it was so hot in there too it was so it hot was. In there and too, we're like but... what are we doing in here i don't get it i can't see anything yeah i think it's short there's definitely gonna be those moments yeah. But yeah. No, it's it's gonna be great. It's gonna be a fantastic game. But yeah, I agree. It's not gonna be one where you're like, it's like Animal Crossing. Oh, you know, you, you play a game to relax. Oh no, not the last of us. Oh no. You're that's, some that's people a game will. to clench, as as Brittany likes to yeah. say. I feel uh, like I feel like playing The Last of Us Part Two is gonna be like watching a cinematic experience like Schindler's List. You go mm. into it knowing that it's going to be fantastic phenomenal storytelling and like it's gonna be really good but yeah no it's gonna suck it's gonna be fucking brutal <laughs> and hard and terrible but you're gonna come out the other side going wow that was an amazing story that needed to be told and i'm so glad that i watched it but i don't want to watch it again for a very long time yeah, yeah i think that's actually probably a, a fairly good uh, comparison <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> Although Schindler's List is like two hours. <laughs> two, like movies are so much shorter. You can get through them. <laughs> and you no, don't like, and you can I, close I, your I, eyes when it gets intense. Yeah, like yeah. you're not participating. You're not actively needing to do the thing. Like you are not active you're gonna need to murder so many people in this game. And I just I mean I definitely have it in me in some games where it's more like, haha, run good, stupid bleak like, But to Kill with the intensity it seems like Ellie is going for. Like, ugh. Maybe it's therapeutic. I don't know that I have that for, like, in me. I feel like that's really intense. Yeah. <laughs> Anyways, this came on a weird, this weird, we've now do dove down this weird rabbit hole. but We have. It's fun. Yes. Okay, on that note, that's going to do it for our news segment. And instead of taking another break, we're just going to roll right into our hands-on section where we talk about what we've been playing um, and I think it's probably because a lot of us haven't been playing anything that's too different than what we've already been playing so Britt you said that you played a teeny bit of Sakura Wars yeah, Sakura Wars. So um, I haven't played enough of this yet to really be able to talk about it because I'm kind of flubbing in this weird like world where I've been doing nothing but playing Yakuza games for the past two months. So now I'm thinking like, well, what do I play? And I find myself reading and researching Yakuza still. Like <laughs> you're like, no, I'm still I'm still obsessed with Yakuza. I am still obsessed with it, and I it's so funny and I, it's it's crazy and I never really thought would have thought this would have happened. So I'm trying to find a game that sounds good. I looked into Sleeping Dogs, which looks good. There's another, a um, few other ones by the same studio that I'm looking at that I might pick up. But Sakura Wars just looked like something so different that I thought, like, maybe this will stick. And so far, I'm I'm not sure if I'm going to finish it. Not that there's anything wrong with it, but I don't know if it's the kind of game I'm in the mood for. So from what I gather so far, it's part adventure game where you walk around and you talk to people and you engage in cutscenes and you get little, like, animated stories between them. And then there's mech battles. And I've only had one mech battle. But and it was great. It was really fun. But I think kind of what I was craving was more of um, an expansive JRPG, which I admittedly did not do my research before getting into this game. So that's my fault. 
You just saw the name and you were like, this seems like... Oh, yeah, like cute anime-looking characters. <laughs> yeah. Like, I heard this really good character development and there's, like, fun romance in it. I'm like, that sounds kind of fun and uplifting right now. But so far, you know, the entirety of the game that I've played has taken place in this theater. And you are trying to restore the theater to its former glory. You were in the, oh, the Navy or something and you just got back. In the Navy. In the Sorry. Navy. I'm trying to find the the plot, but I think I'm on the wrong Wikipedia page right now. So anyway, yeah, you, you come back and then you meet your old childhood friend Sakura who works for this like company that is a theater, but they're also, uh, they also protect the town when the town needs it from demons. It's like this thing I'm trying, it's the most anime thing ever. And you walk around and you're trying to make your, you're trying to build these relationships because it has this thing called the lips system. And so when you talk to someone, Wait, you get the lips. L I P S. Yeah. And you get, um, you talk to someone and then you get multiple choices, kind of like in a bio or a game, for example. But the thing is, you're timed. And these, these choices come up rather frequently. And depending on what you say, you can earn points, you can lose points, or you don't get any points. And that builds trust, and then that unlocks scenes where you can like touch the characters and their face. Like you, like remember when we had that soft joke caress, with, soft caress is like blowing into your 3DS with your Fire Emblem characters. Oh Something yeah, along. yeah. Hey, um, baby girl, how you but, doing? So far, I think that's kind of the idea of the game. Is it's mostly making those choices, getting people to like you participating in mech battles, kind of like an interactive anime story with some fighting on the side. Not that that's a bad thing, but I'm not sure that's quite what I'm craving right now because it's not Yakuza. Yeah. I feel you. To be honest. Yeah, so I'm going to sure. I think there's eight chapters and I'm two in, so I still have a ways to go. But other than that, I'm just honestly doing a lot more. I'm really doubling down on the Japanese learning, and that's kind of been what I've been up to most you're, of the time. You're getting ready to be able to just play Yakuza without reading the subtitles. That's what I'm saying. That's what I'm saying. I'm That's proud my of point. you, Brett. You got like another, you know, you got a, you got a couple months at least. So let's go. Yeah, yeah. I wish that'd be great. So no, that's what I've been playing. So like, say if that sounds like something you'd be interested in, it's cute, it's uplifting, it's bubbly, it's definitely a feel good game, but it doesn't have that sense of, you know, like grand Japanese JRPG exploration that I was kind of going for. Yeah. Because the game is all in Japanese as well, so I was kind of going for that like culture again. But. That makes sense. Well, speaking yeah. of uh, Yakuza, Steimer, you said you've played just a smidgen, just a tiny smidgen of it. Yeah, such such a small sliver. Okay, so we'll... It's we'll, not even, like, yeah, it's not worth talking about yet, but it's... Okay. It's fire. It's, like, on my Xbox. It's there. Although I, I start with dump, Zero. I... But Zero's not free. It's on Game Pass. Is it? Because I went to, like, try and download it, and the only one they gave me was the other one. Yeah, it should be on Game Pass, unless they took it off, which would be really maybe, dumb. They maybe took it off. Okay. Uh, I don't know. We'll, uh, we'll investigate. but um, Or we've... I'm stupid and can't find it. That's also possible. Okay. <laughs> You're not I'll stupid. Look you, girl. Uh, but something that we all have been playing is Later Daters. Yes, we have. So Later Daters is a dating sim for people in a... Assisted living facility. Yeah, that's the word. Um, and we started playing this as part of our Patreon after hour stream. And then Steimer picked it up for her birthday stream. And <laughs> so far it's been going pretty good. I really enjoy all of the different personalities, but I feel like the writing is just a little slow. I think that's also the, because we're voice acting it. Yes. <laughs> what do you mean? But I, but I think, um, in general, well, at least so far, because we're on episode like three and I don't really know that I have a sense of who even likes me, who I think this might be a situation where literally everybody likes you and it doesn't matter. Like that kind of dating sim where you're just like, eh, screw it. Everyone will fuck you because they're all 80 and they don't care. <laughs> um, Blair certainly case, does not care. Blair doesn't seem to care. Jax doesn't seem to care. So I think this might just be you have the you have the your pickings, whatever, whoever you want is fine. Um so that's kind of an interesting. It's been interesting in the sense that it actually goes a lot deeper than a lot of uh, dating sims do in terms of thematics. So one of the things we ran into on the stream yesterday was it went a little, a little maybe too heavy in the group therapy department and got a little too real for us. And we were all like, we are here for fun dating sim time. What's happening? Why are we all discussing our like feelings that could be very valid and real? We don't want to do that. I just want 
Blair to say something stupid, and I want Cooch. Jax to write me a poem, and I want Mariana to be on my ass. Like, that's what I want. <laughs> Why yeah, is this not happening? Yeah, and I mean, I think the content written was well written. I think they did yes. a good job at it, and it really, you know, as someone who's kind of going through that process of losing someone who didn't quite have all their ducks in a row, so to speak, like a lot of what they're saying when they're talking about how they're worried about dying and what's going to happen to their family. I was like, wow, that's really hitting home right now. And that's all incredibly valid. But it did kind of seem to come out of nowhere, especially when a few scenes ago, Blair was screaming cooch, cooch, cooch everywhere. And it was like yeah. this thing. But oh, that was God, that was so funny. But yeah, it, it definitely was a little long winded. And maybe like you said, Simon, it was because uh, we were voice acting everything. <laughs> Took way longer than well, it Well, that's why at some point I was like, listen, Steimer just has to read this all. We have to get through this faster. I'm literally falling asleep listening to us read the thing. So, like, let's pick it up the pace. Um, yeah. I think I really just, like, by the third episode, I was like, we haven't even made out with anybody yet. Like, we need to have some action by episode three. Yeah. <laughs> that yeah. was the nice part about um, Dream Daddy yeah. is they did give you a hint of action. Or at least you could engage with it if you wanted to. Um, or you could say, no, I'm not ready for that yet or whatever. But I, like there was much, it felt like there was a lot more flirting in that game immediately versus this one where it feels like it's more of a slow build. They're actually, it feels, this game feels less like a dating sim and more like it's actually trying to tell you a story and make the older generation a little more visible and more visible into like problems that they might be having or things that they might be thinking about and what life might be like for them. It's yeah. more of a lens into that life than it is a fun, stupid dating sim, which is kind of what I thought we were getting. So it's not bad by any means, but it's just, it's an interesting take because I played stuff like Hatiful Boyfriend, which you're in like the pigeon dating sim, uh, or again, Dream Daddy, where you're just dating hunky dads. And so it was just more not what I was expecting because I was expecting it to be more in that vein and it's right. not. It's a much more like kind of serious think piece with a little bit of dating sim sprinkled on top. Yeah. Yeah. We really just want the old people to bone. All sure. they the will. Boning. They will need a prescription shortly after. For pain. Indeed. No, for STDs. An there's lot, there's oh, lots oh, of yeah. Oh, I see um, where you're going with that. Yeah. Um, also, Samuel does look like Yakuza Zero is still on Game Pass. So really? I, I couldn't. F I'll have to search for it on there because I was just browsing through and I saw the other Yakuza and I was like, I thought Yakuza Zero was here. That's so weird. Uh, maybe I'm just blind. It's possible. Whatever. You're not blind. You probably just missed it. Um, a game that I played this week on a different stream, very different stream, was Predator Hunting Ground. So Ilphonic made this game. Predator, old school, amazing action movie franchise. Love it. When I found out that Alphonic was going to be doing this, I was like, oh, that asymmetrical multiplayer gameplay seems like it could be perfect for this. And I really enjoy that being on the opera, uh, the operative team doesn't feel as helpless as it did when you were playing Friday the 13th and you were a camp counselor against Jason. While they did obviously give you objectives as counselors, I just didn't think that there was enough action because a lot of times you could just kind of hide out if you really wanted to. But I like how the game kind of forces you out into the open and you have to kind of move between these camps. And then there's enemy AI and the enemy AI soldiers will attack both the operatives and the predator. So we played this game on stream. Um, thank you again to, to Gio Corsi and my lovely husband, John Drake, for playing with us. Of course, Rihanna Manuel played with us as well. It was super fun. And uh, Mr. Mud, shout out to Mr. Mud, our community <laughs> member who joined in, Wet Dirt, and Wet dirt. Um, was a very good predator, probably too good of a predator, <laughs> I would say, oh God. against us. And we had a lot of fun playing it, and I definitely want to spend more time in it because I think that it just makes for some good shenanigans. But I really did enjoy this game. I think the unlock system, I need to spend more time with to see like how much it feels like you are getting better guns or better scopes, magazines, etc. I think that the cosmetics are a nice touch and I like that you can be a lady predator or a male predator and the predator feels super powerful. I was commenting to Geo that some of the issues I had whenever I played as Jason was that, yeah, Jason is super 
freaking powerful, but he's also really slow. And I know that in the world of Friday the 13th lore that that fits, right? They built a Jason to feel like Jason, but it's not really super fun to play. Oh, yeah. No, we hear them. We hear them screaming. Oh, I know. Oh, I, know. I just I gave them the finger because they're a bunch. It's it's like 8 p.m. Shut up. Go back inside. Yeah. If you, you, I'm hoping you won't be able to hear this on the podcast, but my neighbors are something else. Let me tell you. They mm-hmm. are. We're going to get you out of there, Cyber. Yeah, please. Uh, <laughs> get you into a place with no screaming children and some air conditioning. Um, but the game was really Dream. fun, and I enjoyed my time with it, and I want to try it some more and, and, and spend more time, and hopefully we'll have more thoughts. But I think that they still have a little bit of work to do with the matchmaking. We were playing in a private match, which helps a lot in regards to being able to just boot right into games, but they are working on it. They pushed two big patches since launch and that helps, but they're a smaller team. Like I think it's important to remember that this game was a pretty low budget game compared to a lot of multiplayer games out there. And I think that they're doing the best with what they have to work with. So hopefully if people are having fun that they'll be able to continue pushing updates and optimizing the game and it'll get better and better. It's always kind of a bummer when you see games like this that have this powerhouse IP that get maybe a little underfunded because it's a unknown concept or the people who are funded in are like, well, we don't know how it's going to go. And then the servers and the multiplayer aspect of the game kind of suffers because the team is like overwhelmed with too many things to do and not enough bodies to handle it all. So I hope that they continue to improve upon the game and the game gets more and more stable and more people play because I had a good time. It was fun. It was really fun watching you guys play. I was in chat when Andrew was playing. I was there for the whole time, I think, actually. And it was it was really great. Just so, oh, first of all, Andrew has the best evil laugh ever. I mean, <laughs> yeah, yeah, that was a great clip. <laughs> yeah, Shout out to so Lucy funny. Jen for making that, cri- that clip. Well, <laughs> We had a drinking game going on in the chat whenever, because Rihanna has the funniest squawks ever. Like, because I could, you could hear her through the party chat. She and every time she screamed or Andrea screamed, it was a shot. And whenever Nathaniel ninety seven, I think it was in chat, said that they were drunk, the whole chat also did a shot. But I had to reduce that down to half a shot because that poor human was saying they were drunk every like five minutes. Yes. But we were all having a really Sick good time. Sick as a mile, was, everybody. <laughs> it, was, it was so much fun. It was, it was a really funny moment when Andrea was the predator. Oh, no, you weren't the predator. But you told someone that you said, now get back up on your tree. Or you said yes. something like yeah. that. I was <laughs> like, shoo, shoo, go away. Go away, you predator. <laughs> Leave me alone. Because you could, because when you were playing as a predator, you were lurking around in the tree. And you were, you did a really good job. Because people, I guess, didn't, you know, when you're new to a game like this, you don't really know, like, where to look, right? And she was just fucking lurking up in that tree, and people were walking our knees. She would pounce on him, slash, slash him up, and brrr, up. She would scurry back and wait for the next victim. And she mutilated poor Ree several times, and it was just—it was a really entertaining game to watch be played. Yeah, it was, it was fun. fun. If you guys want to watch the playback of that, you can catch it on our Twitch channel. That's where the vod you, is. You should. It, it was a good time. Yeah, it was—it was super fun. Um, but yeah, so I played a little bit of that, and then of course I. I've been playing way too much Animal Crossing. I, I, I feel like I was not anticipating this becoming a problem. And now that I've played this much <laughs> Animal Crossing, I kind of am like, why did people think that I would hate this game? Because it's all about decorating. I love decorating. <laughs> yeah, but it's slow, and you're not usually the most patient person. No, Th- that's truth. Steimer, that is a good call out because if a friend of mine, shout out to Susu Dip, hadn't given me a very generous loan of bells to help me kind of (laughs) fast track my progress in the game, I definitely probably would have given up because I've already gotten to the place where I've got my attic now in my house. So I have four rooms. Oh, wow. Yeah. And I wouldn't wouldn't have been able to do that. And the reason I was able to do that is because her loan allowed me to buy – a bridge. Oh, so why the frick are bridges so expensive? Oh my god! And then I mean, it was hard to build a bridge. Have you tried? Uh, no. That's fair. But like, <laughs> if it's a couple <laughs> logs, it shouldn't cost that much, Mister Nook. But I was able to get my first turnip buy with her loan that she gave me, and with that, I finally got into the turnip stock stock market. And um, <laughs> thanks to Patrick for letting me come by his by his island. Um, I just 
I was not, I was not ready. I like, I'm pretty, I'm pretty in now. You, you in? You, you in it to win it? Yeah. I think I'm in it. Well, at least yeah. I have to, Maria has said that I, she's like, listen, you can't quit until you pay me back. And I was like, that's fair. And I feel so on AC before you did. Granted, I didn't have a loan. I had to like rough it myself. Do you need one? Geez. Um, do you, do you need one? I'm now in the turnip stock market. I can get you some bells. I tried the I stock can... market. Everything rotted. I forgot about it. I forgot about it. Yeah. yeah Wait, so when do the I turnips just... rot? They have, a, they have a week shelf life. Oh, okay. Yeah. So if you, hilariously, one of my, one of my friends tweeted about this. They, their partner thought that they were doing, this was a, not a mean animal crossing thing. It turned into it, but it was it, well intended. It, so she thought she was doing her partner a favor by she's like, oh, I'm going to fast forward to, you know, <gasps> fuck with the game clock so that it'll be oh. on a day when turnip prices are really good. And then I'll make her millions of dollars and I'll finish her house and it'll be great. <laughs> um, if you have not played Animal Crossing, you don't know. The game does not let you do that. And if you do that, all the turnips no. rot. Yeah. So she yeah. lost like a bunch of cash. Um, <laughs> and she was like, I'm so sorry. But I'm like, that's. That's an okay thing. I wouldn't be mad about that. It's, but I do think it's really fucked up to see the stories of other people where they like deliberately go in and destroy their Animal Crossing shit. I think that's that is bad. Up. Don't do that. Do you that. mean when somebody comes to somebody else's island and destroys? No, something? there was there was like a story on Reddit of like a, a couple and they got in a fight and so the boyfriend went on her switch and de- like destroyed a lot of what she had done. That's yeah, like, that's like, that. why, why, yeah. why would you do and then, that? And then said, it's just a game. You can just rebuild it. I would, I that's like, grounds for a divorce because it's throw not the act that person itself. away. Yeah. Cause it's not like the act itself. Like, is it consequential? Hey, but it's the idea that someone wanted to do something so fucking shitty to you that they know you worked so hard on doing yep. that. They wanted to deliberately hurt you. That's what's fucked up about that whole thing. I Don't feel like that. you want to deliberately hurt your partner in any way, shape or form, yeah. even if it's not physical, you should just break up. Thank just you. Up. Thank you, yeah. Simer. That was going to be the teachable moment here where I've had, I feel like I've had this conversation with several of my friends over the course of my lifetime where I've said, if this person says that they love you, but they intentionally do something to hurt you, whether it's they call you a bad name, they take something of yours, they destroy something of yours. If they say that they hurt you and they intentionally hurt you, because we all say dumb shit from time to time, we unintentionally hurt people we care about. Like that's just part of being human and miscommunication. Shit happens. But if somebody intentionally with malice does something to hurt you, They do not love you the way they say they do. And that is fucked up. This is your life lesson from what's good games. Also, for those of you on YouTube, I was doing this because this is this in sync bye, bye, bye. But (laughs) I'm realizing some people might not know that. They might think I'm mocking Andrea being like, no. No, it's yes. (laughs) That's a a life lesson in sync taught us back when we were children. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. You do not intentionally hurt people you love. You do not do that. No. 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 And if you do that, you need to talk to someone and get You need a lot of therapy. Yes, and if you look at yourself and go, wow, I'm doing that to someone I love, you need to examine why you're doing that. Why are you being yeah. that way? Don't do that. And if someone's doing it to you, look at that relationship and go, what am I doing in this relationship? Why is this person hurting me? Don't let people yeah. hurt you. It's not normal. No. You don't it's not. Know. Not normal. Mm-mm. Mm. Don't ruin what? your significant other's Animal Crossing Island. It's mean. That's really mean. Yeah. It's true. Anyway, I'm enjoying Animal Crossing. <laughs> I'm so I'm happy glad. to hear that. <laughs> I'm having a good time. I'm thinking about what I'm going to build tonight when I'm sitting on the couch after I edit the show and I'm waiting for it to render. It's like, hmm, what am I going to do tonight? I got to build another bridge. I got to sell another plot of land, get a new villager. One of Joey's vi- villagers is now on my island because I went to go visit Joey Noel. And I talked to this guy named Kevin on her island, and now he lives with me. What? <laughs> yeah. Nice, you stole him. No, she kicked him off her, her island to get somebody else on. And then he's like, oh, oh I came here from Star Hollow. I'm like, oh, Star Hollow is Joey's island. <laughs> I say, you island wrecker. What are you doing? Amazing. Amazing. 
She was like, get out of here, you riffraff. And he was like, fine, I'll go to Andrea's Island. And then, like, everyone's welcome on Cloudwine. Let's go. Mm. Ooh, <laughs> Cloudwine is a great name for the island. Good yeah, job. Maybe I'll pick it up while I'm waiting for you to wait to get the show rendered so then I can upload it. Maybe I'll, uh, I'll hop into Animal Crossing. Listen, baby girl, let's go. I'll be on. Yeah. Come visit my island. I'll come visit yours. It'll be great. And I can't take credit for Cloudwine. When I did my very first baby first Animal Crossing stream, I asked the Twitch chat for help in naming my island. And oh, I, and I, and I, and I, communal effort. and I am very apologetically forgetting the kind soul who suggested Cloudwine. But I was like, that's the Great one. Name. There was a it lot of suggestions, but when I saw Cloudwine, I was like, that's it. On that note, are there any other games you'd like to talk about? I feel like most of these we haven't spent enough time with, so we should just punt to next week. Let's punt it. All right. Well, thanks, everybody, for hanging out on the What's Good Games podcast. Please join me in the Bungie Bounty stream. And don't forget, on Monday, Anita Sarkeesian is going to be on What's Good Games Live. Come hang out with us in the chat. And we've got a bunch of streams happening, which I'm not going to go back over. You heard it at the top of the show. Make sure you're following us at what's good underscore games on Twitter. We tweet all the stuff. It's gonna be great. For now, enjoy the rest of your weekend. Bye, everybody.